Mike test doesn't matter. It's a piece of sausage at this point. Uh, you are jabroni. You cannot get the sun right. You are fucking piece of shit, no good motherfucker. Shiki, we have a lot to talk about. You need to control yourself, all right? <laughs> I know. We're not even on the fucking air. You want to talk? We are on the air. It is recording. The camera is on, baby. You don't have the Shiki be recording. You are fucking <laughs> Oh, beat the fuck out of you. You're just mad that Roman Reigns' reign was better than yours, all right? That's why you are upset, okay? I know you're salty. I know you don't like Hulk Hogan for 50 years. And guess what? You are a fucking piece of shit. I wanted Roman Reigns to win so that he can beat that fucking Hollywood Blonde Brody record. And he could not. He cannot. Listen, to Robert Reyes, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Shiki, Shiki, listen to me. We have a Shiki, guest. Uh, I saw a lot of Macho Man uh, savages at the WrestleMania. What do you think of Macho Man? Oh, yeah, Shiki, tell us about Macho. Macho Man, you are fucking piece of shit. No good motherfucker. You are fucking cheap. You don't even want to buy the Elizabeth a hot dog for $2. You are <laughs> Fucking punk. That is why she went with the fucking Jabroni Luger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like you snuck in and you made that Jake the Snake snake angry just so he could get Macho. Fuck the Macho Man. A snake no a snake. And Macho Man, you're a fucking snake. Okay, you pretend <laughs> that you not like Hulk Hogan, but you suck Hulk, Hulk Hogan dick and you suck the Hulk Hogan ass. Wow! I never respect you. I that's mean, a lot sucking of sucking. Ass. You know, the kids yeah. are really into sucking ass now, Shiki. You predicted that. So. That's true, Shiki. You knew about it in the seventies. Uh, I said perfect. Yeah, you did. You did say it perfect. Um, guys, I know, I know. There's a lot of demand for the Legend of Wrestling. Listen, we're back, man, and we got a lot to talk about. It is WrestleMania post recap whatever you want to call it we're gonna talk all things wrestlemania uh okay. we're gonna talk raw after mania we're gonna talk cm punk we're gonna talk uh, about being there in person because the man you've been hearing you know his voice he has a familiar voice he's been on this show before we've made a lot of predictions on this show about this mania that just passed wrestlemania 40 and Let's talk about it. Pratik, welcome. Hello, Pedge. Hello, Shiki. What's going on, everybody? That's right. That's right. What's going on is right. Pratik, going you on? are a very intelligent wrestling fan. You uh, know about the Sheik. You know about the WrestleMania important camera master. <laughs> you are not like this fucking Jabroni, Pedge the Maniac. Okay, he don't know nothing about the WrestleMania. Listen, man, I... I, uh, I'm just a jabroni. You're right. I'm, I'm over here. Okay. So that you can shine. I'm doing the spot for you. All right. And, and, and you gotta recognize the leader, you fucking punk. <laughs> Speaking of punk, let's start there because you know, he's the best in the world on that announcer's table in the ring, whatever he touches turns to gold hundred percent. And it happened again at mania. So, uh, but before we get into all of that, I want to talk to you, Pratik. You were at WrestleMania. Uh, tell us about your entire experience. And it wasn't just WrestleMania that you were at. Uh, tell us about what else you attended and, and, and your whole week. Yeah, anytime you're going to these type of events, you know, one, I was there, I was doing some comedy stuff too. Got to do the Philly Punchline, got to do Helium Comedy. Actually got recognized at Mania by somebody who saw me at the Philly Punchline. That's That made my that's, day. That, that's, that's great, man. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. Not to brag that, or not to pull up that flex, but that that happened. That's pretty wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, when you go to these type of weekend events, there's people from all over the world. There, literally, I saw, I saw the the Iranian flag. A bunch of bunch of fans had were holding that. You you see that at these arena shows. You see that at the stadium shows. People are showing their pride. They're from all over the world, and they're here converging. You know, the world is very divided now. When we watch the news. It's kind of cool to have this one big thing where people can kind of come together and drop their problems for 
three hours, four hours, you know, depending how long it goes or whatever. But uh, yeah, you, you, there's, there was such a good international flavor in Philadelphia. It was great. Uh, and you know, the, the wrestling industry as a whole converges on Philly. So you see a lot of indie shows too, you know, it's also the city that gave birth to ECW. So there were a lot of ECW tribute shows, a lot of hardcore tribute shows. So it was something where, you know, this year has been kind of cool. I got to go to revolution, which was at the Greensboro Coliseum also, which wow. is a historical rev venue for us. And so I've been trying to go to not just all oh, big events, but also, Hey, let's see some cool intimate arenas. Let's see some arenas of history. So for me, one of the cool things I got to go to was the the original ECW arena. It's called the 2300 Arena now. Mm-hmm. And they put on a tribute show literally at the same time as Heyman's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. They did this really cool tribute show. Uh, funny enough, the Buff Dudley Boys and Tommy Dreamer were in a tag. They were supposed to headline, but because of Paul opening, if you watch the Hall of Fame, Paul Heyman does not headline the Hall of Fame. He goes at first, right. and they cut to all the Dudley boys and dreamer and everybody being there. So they had to leave that show early. They had to actually open that tribute show that I went to just so that they could get in time over to Wells Fargo. So it was, oh, wow. You know, I wonder if there was that a, uh, the order of the hall of fame inductees, what you think that was a last minute change up or was you think uh, that was uh, something that was just scheduled that way. And they had to just adjust. Maybe triple H wanted to try something new, like give the opener, give them the most attention, most time. I think, I think I could also see Paul being like, no, I'm, I'm just a manager. I'm just a focus. Like, let me lead. I thought it was a great way to kick off the show. It was great. It was great. You had the, the, I believe the last inductee was Leah. My view. So you had the rock closing the show. So you still got two big events bookending the hall of fame. Uh, Heyman speech. I didn't get to watch it live because I chose to do, I chose to live extreme and go to the actual ECW arena. Uh, it is wild. They've definitely remodeled the play. Everybody kept saying like, they remodeled it. It used to be a shithole. Like right. it, it looked nice. There was a cool wall right near the bathroom that had like all the signatures of like tree that everybody signed. It was like the classic wall. Cody signed it too. Cause I guess Cody did an event at the 2300 when he was still, uh, I believe in his ring of honor days when he kind of had left, you know, so it, it, it was a really cool venue. Yeah. It's a, uh, and it's a bingo hall too, apparently. So again, you're performing in the bingo halls, you know, that's, from- that is, that is uh yeah, that's definitely um, a treasure to, to go to that. How many, how many shows did you go to all in all, obviously, including mania, including mania about six shows, six shows in, in, wow. uh, in what, in four days, five days, Yeah, four or five days. Yeah, it, was, it was a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. Uh, and you did comedy. So that's and like Tommy as well. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Is it true? Uh, that's cool. I uh, a tribute I, show. Uh, a Sandman was also on the tribute show. He did a couple cool moments. Oh, hey. uh, he didn't do a full match. C- certain legends just made appearances. Certain people did matches. Shane Helms did a cool match uh, with a. Uh, do you remember C W Anderson? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he showed up too. That's cool. Uh, Tajiri was there. Uh, oh, nice. Super crazy was there. Uh, okay. Oh, Just God. incredible. Was he there? Just incredible. Did, wasn't on that one. He, they did another show on Thursday, but we went to blood sport then. So we kind of, again, there were like 18 different shows on Friday night at seven between SmackDown, between the, the original GCW event. That mm-hmm. was the one where like, you know, Matt Cardona wrestled on and all, which that was a good match too. We wanted to go that, but again, you're competing, you're cannibalizing your audience. So right, you had right. that, you had the tribute show. And we were like, well, I want to go to the arena. I want to see the historical thing. You know, that's something you can't see every year. You know, you know. That's so I, I decided to choose that, and I'm I'm happy with the choice. So. No, that's great. Um, and uh, what what would you say, like, before we get into like the breakdown of of the main shows, what would you say your favorite moment was? Um, non WrestleMania, basically, like the, of the indie shows. Um, All the indie shows was was your favorite. The, 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 the indie shows were cool because they were smaller venues. You're getting to see, you know, when you think of wrestling most of the time as a TV stuff, there's a there's a huge independent season. I think there's some really cool stuff going on in the indie scene. I encourage your viewers, listeners, like, look up in your local town, whatever. The, there's probably a GCW event or an indie event. Like, support, you know, we want to support local comedians, rappers, support local wrestlers as well. You know, right. Actually, come to think of it, now that you've mentioned it, this Saturday... Um, there's something in um, my neighborhood of Chatsworth out here in California. Oh, hell yeah. Chatsworth Blockfest. There's going to be a uh, street wrestling there. Okay. Like they're going to have a wrestling ring yeah. in the middle of the street where it's blocked off. It's They have a week con. It's like a comic con and all that stuff. But there's going to be independent wrestlers there. 
uh, performing a couple matches. So anybody who wants to come check out some independent wrestling should come and check that out. It's free, so can't beat support, that. Support the locals. They need the money. <laughs> you know, and you can't teach that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, he was there. He was doing a signing. Enzo. Enzo? <laughs> I that saw team, Enzo. What, I mean, a few people doing signings. Enzo, uh, Blue Meanie, Blue Meanie was there. He had a Meanie. He had a Meanie Mania shirt in the Philadelphia flat. Uh, that's nice super, super cool, man. Um, did you get to interact with any of the the pros, the pro wrestlers? Um, the pro wrestlers interacted. Look, I saw. I kept seeing Champa at like all these different events. Like, like uh, there's the Reading Terminal Market, which is the big Philly market. I kept seeing him there. He had his hood up. But we. You know, I just kind of was, I kept it quick with them, you know, just like, hey, yeah. I have a match tomorrow. Uh, Nick Nemeth, I've seen at his comedy shows a few times. He he had a few at the comedy store, you know, back when I was living with you, Pedge. Uh, yeah. So he remembered me from that. I also mentioned I would do comedy. So I talked with him a little bit at Bloodsport, actually. It was really cool. Um, so How he can't forget the beard. You, know? <laughs> you can't forget. I'm, I'm not, you, you don't forget this face. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually opened Bloodsport, actually. He did the opening. Oh, wow. With yeah. Speedball Mike Bailey. Mike, apparently Mike Bailey did like four shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So he had like 12 should do. He was running, he was like Samuel Bade running from show to show of wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Show, yeah. Uh and then I saw also Dust Dustin Rhodes was in the vicinity in the area. I don't know if you saw him, but uh yeah, he was I mean, well, he was he was there in the in a box seat for cody's uh i believe he was there for both nights yeah uh, okay he was also oh, he was at mania okay cool that's yeah, mania. Probably I would have liked yeah, yeah exactly right reasons. right 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 i would have i part of me was like he doesn't need to look he doesn't need to do gold us he doesn't need to get physical why can't he just hug cody at the end of the night dude 100 percent. but i mean i did i i didn't mind uh mama Rhodes holding the title at the end that was cool you saw mama Rhodes. you saw brandy Rhodes. you saw mama Rhodes step husband uh yes oh you know who you do see you did see one AEW wrestler in the ring uh negative one Brody lee jr he was in the he was wearing the nightmare hoodie like really oh young really wow but, uh, young brody wow wow that's yeah i have to watch that back to look for that uh, more closely yeah well hold that against uh tony khan but that's a different <sighs> subject entirely yeah, we have I to do stick it. to mania. Exactly, tonight. we're sticking to mania tonight. Uh, we at the end of the this episode, we wanted to just get predictions of like, from what we what we saw, what we thought where was going to, yeah. what did happen, and now where are we headed after where this. Where we head now? So, of course. Yeah, exactly. So, let's start with the big one. I want to start with the the. Let's start from let's start with the main thing because everybody wants to hear that about that right now. So, um, night one. Uh, the main event we had Rock Roman uh, versus uh, a, basically half of Seth Rollins, essentially, um, and, <laughs> and whatever, and, and Cody. Um, that match was a bloodline rules. Where where were you in vicinity to to the ring? Um, yeah, on the first night I was kind of in the two hundreds level, and then on the second night I was in the hundred level. Oh, wow, so you weren't that far. You were pretty you were pretty close. Then when they came into the audience, did they pass by your your section or no? Uh, when Seth, Seth, no, Seth made grand entrance uh, on the stage. I believe it was only during night two where he did the shield entrance. Through the audience. Right, yes, 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 yes. Uh, but the, they, the didn't first, they fight into the audience a little bit? They did I, fight. I the, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about it during the match when they fought. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, and, that, and that was the other side, unfortunately. So I did have to uh -huh. go a little bit to the monitor. But what I did get to see that I don't know if it cut because so we went back a little bit and tried to watch on Peacock to see what was covered. Did they they don't show Cody throwing Roman into the lettering of the stage? They cut away and then they cut, they show the end of it. Right, you know? right, yeah, they don't. Right. They, yeah. Whereas in person, because that when you're when you have multiple people kind of going around when you're in the arena. You're not following the hard cam. You're just looking. You're just right. seeing what's in the ring. You right. don't have commentary all. So that's the other. The, yes. If there is one downside to live events, is you don't get the commentary. So, you know, you miss out on certain nuggets. You miss out. You're kind of just following the ring as you go, which there's something fun about that. Don't get me wrong. I love that. But, like, it makes for interesting stuff, whether it's the, the tag match, which spilled out into the arena, spilled out onto stage. It made it interesting for the ladder match as well. I'm not focusing on what the hard cam is covering, so I'm seeing the other little moments here and there. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that – and I think matches were very interesting to me because I'm seeing the different perspective. And I think that's meant for the audience 
that are in attendance. Like, and then it's, it's almost two shows simultaneously. They're putting one on for you guys and then one for the, for the hard camp. I got to say this before we go any further too. Um, I think that the, um, the camera work for this year's WrestleMania was incredible. Mm. Um, a lot of the um, new angles that they've experimented with, with, excuse me, experimented with over the past couple of weeks. I know there's been some iffy ones I've criticized on Raw and SmackDown, but I said it, we were in experimental phase. Yes. Whatever they've been doing, they got it right at WrestleMania because they got a lot of very, very good shots from angles that normally are not captured at WrestleMania. But they got them. It was they got some really really cool moments. That's what you get when it's the Triple H era now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's the whole thing too. Um, I, they it made was it about- a point multiple times. Whether it was so Triple H kicked off the night one, he came right, out, right. and there were multiple times during Heyman's speech. Again, not to give away anything, but like there were multiple times, whether through Heyman's speech, Stephanie's intro on night two, they're real. The new there's a new opening. There's a new opening. Crawl. There is, yes. Right. And they introduced it on uh, night one. That's so, amazing. yeah. They the really want you to know. This is com- – this Vin- no one's touching this. The same Vince. Kevin Dunn's gone. Like like Wep mentioned about the production stuff, you know, that's a really good point you mentioned because, yeah, there were different – like, you know, Kevin Dunn had the more shaky cam style, hard cam style. This one, longer shots. There was some new stuff on Raw on Monday too where they panned from the uh, backstage back to the ring in a new way. Um, that's right. I really yeah. love – if you remember a couple of weeks ago, because I was at the Chicago Raw when Brock did that, you know, old school beat down in the rain. There mm-hmm. is something very mem- – if you notice, it's a very interesting callback to old Memphis old school wrestling, like beat downs in the, in the, in the alley shadow with the way the lighting was done, the way right. the close-up of the rock. Uh, the way it cuts and he goes, no, come back here. We're not done. Like these old <laughs> – like they're doing a lot of different things. And, yes – it's an experiment. So some might work, some might not, but I, I like that they're taking chances. This is 100%. the time. Right? It's a great time to do that. Right. Because yeah. I mean, I all, I'm, I almost feel like from F- WrestleMania 40 on, it's like, uh, it's almost like a reset, reset. button on, mm. on the entire company. It's like, this is a new, it's a li- they've, they've played with the word era and all that in the past. Right. But it's like, it was still the same like five people in charge so mm-hmm. now but now it's like legitimately like it's it's paul levesque it's his league now right it's his it's his company it's his right. he's running the game he, <laughs> pun, no pun intended and it's <laughs> like it's like it's legitimate it's and you can see it and you i almost feel like he's earned this too right like triple h i mean he's had to pay his dues uh both as a wrestler and now, and then also as an exec Producer. Yeah, like as the booger, he's had to always be in the shadows of, you know, uh, the crazy lunatic Vince McMahon. Well, besides um, the shadows, he's also had to deal with the criticism of marrying into that family and yeah. that being a reflection of his work and so forth. But I think you can see now that um, it has nothing to do with any of that. Like he actually has a brilliant mind for the business. As a, and like now he has even better tools to work with because work with you yeah. know, has given him that's part of the reason that they're messing with this new uh, yeah. production style. He's got different people um, that are now uh, employed to by the company that TKO has put in that place yeah. that have different experiences filming different things where including UFC to where they are able to experiment with these new angles and these shots and um techniques and so forth and he's able to have fun with it and uh bring his creative vision to life and they're not just and they're not just imitating ufc camera angles they're actually it's like it's you're i'm not seeing the entrances on the wwe side and think oh this is how ufc does it it doesn't feel like ufc at all so that's another good thing like they're not just like saying okay we're going to do this now it's like the old regime like to do oh this worked with the nfl let's just copy it completely right Right. Well, they updated with the times because originally what I read about for the uh, first and second WrestleManias, even with the first one, I believe it was the second or the third one. I'm, don't quote me on it, but Vince actually had to hire somebody else when he started mm-hmm. to um, bring a different uh, production uh, so, yeah. into it um, when he wanted to film his WrestleManias versus what his dad had in. And that's changed over the years. So for this to be happening now it just seems like these um risks that they're taking are just a natural evolution in the business exactly yeah absolutely. no 100 
So with that said, um, let's let's get into it. Let's get into night. Uh, well, the Hall of Fame. Uh, any? Well, we we were already uh, yeah, talking we were, about the match. Right. So we were talking go. about the the tag match at the end of night one. Well, yeah. So um, let's actually get into it. And here's the thing. Um, I kind of want to tie it into our predictions that we made like six, seven months ago, right? Sure. And, and and it was like, you know, we all had our ideas of what would happen by main. And then when Punk joined the company, we we kind of uh, made an addendum for that as made well. No, yeah, you had to, a lot we, of addendums. On the <laughs> yeah, a lot of addendums. Well, we had to for this one because this was not something that was originally booked for WrestleMania until... Um, Coming up on, I believe it was January when they made some of these changes. There wasn't really a tag match planned. No, no, um, and th- that so was we had to make changes. And by the way, they did a ho- they've done a whole um, like a docu series of the entire uh, production team and 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 the the writing team and how they've they've had to shift once you know the audience started chanting Rocky sucks when he wanted to Cody go yeah, exactly. title they had to- and how they had to actually shift the story um to let to let cody finish the story so there i'm looking forward to that i i think it might already be out but i saw a preview of it on uh i think it was on raw they talked about okay yeah yeah rock and trip trips talking about how they're going to like backstage how they're going to change it up and and so it was truly like chaotic at one point like they had no idea what mania was going to look like uh because of of the backlash from uh, the the fans, and usually so, by Rumble you kind of know, but in this case they were really making changes late in the game. It's, it's it was, crazy. which made this a great WrestleMania. Exactly, it did. It did. The first time in a long time, it felt really like anything could happen. One hundred percent. I didn't know that, that. No, I didn't think. You know, both this tag match we're talk, about to talk about. I had no idea how it was going to uh, pan out. Right. Like we, 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 these weren't even part of our predictions seven months ago. Like we didn't even, we didn't even think about any of these angles. Um, 80% of what I thought about night one, night two's main event um, went right. Yeah. I'll tell you the 20% that I got wrong. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that's cool. Um, I want to, yeah. And we're going to talk about that, but let's, so, so let's go into it. Night one main event uh, tag match. Uh, we didn't talk about this prediction, but what did you think was going to happen and versus what did happen? I had a feeling that, look, it's Rock's first return and real return. I don't count the Eric Rowan thing from Mania 32. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is his first match in, in since, what, Mania 29, 11 years ago, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not going to lose his first return match. I had, a, I had a strong implication that. And it makes Cody's win more poetic if there are odds against, stacked against him. And it is a blood round rules match. Once that stipulation was announced i'm like he they're probably gonna lose night one yeah yeah, what kept you guessing was i thought maybe it wouldn't be a clean win i thought someone would get involved i thought at one point i thought drew was gonna get involved you know right 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 right. but lo and behold the rock pinned cody relatively clean in the middle of the center of the ring no Uh, you got got the people's elbow but you also got cody you know fighting and doing a, a rock bomb you got the you got that cool spot with Cody and Seth doing uh, uh pedigrees. You know, it really is triple right. You're seeing multiple pedigrees throughout the show. You know? <laughs> I know. I hope it doesn't become the new like super kick super party. Kick I mean, yeah, I don't I don't want that because I feel like that diminished Shawn Michaels finishing finish him. But uh anyway. Let's not talk about the dumb fucks on this show. <laughs> the dumb not, not, not on this show. <laughs> the, the, the young we'll fucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, st- we'll, we'll save that for Tony's roast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Counter, right, counter uh, fucks. <laughs> right, right. Another episode which I want you back. We'll talk about all things AEW yeah. and everything. Whatever <laughs> yeah. whatever's left of them. Um but well, so it, well, I'm, actually, I'm going I'm going all in in Wembley. Oh really? Nice. Wow. Nice. Right. Uh so so yeah, so you thought that Rock would win this match, and okay, you were right. I also thought, I also thought, like you know, and again, we didn't share these predictions uh, prehand, but um, once they set that up, uh, the the tag match with the stipulations, um, I was like, yeah, they, they're gonna. I I honestly didn't know what would happen because either either route, there it was intriguing. Like even if if Cody and Seth did end up winning this match. I felt like that still put a lot of things in question because I felt like Roman not first match as, as the tribal chief to not have anybody interfere 
Like that was like, that would, to me was like intriguing. Right. And then if that was to happen, I was thinking that Roman could still pick up the win on night two because no one would have given him a chance. Like, Oh, he only wins because of the bloodline. So then to me, that would have really solidified his legacy as this championship run. Um, but it didn't happen. Rock and, and Rock won and um, Rock and Roman got the win. By the way, supreme shape, uh, both of them. Like Very and, lean. Rock very looks leaner lean. than his normal uh, boulder. Yeah, so. like upper chest, like a lot more pumped out than before. I feel like Rock Cena 10 years ago, he did not look like this. No, he, he way more leaner. And, you know, everybody's been saying, you know, I've, I have friends that work for like wrestling news sites like sports kita for example i have friends like oh they're smoking mirrors i'm like smoking mirrors but rock gave you with that first off the time on that match if you look bell to bell we're not counting intros yeah bell to bell was about 45 minutes for the for the night one main event rock wow. gave you all he could give you in that right. 45 minutes you know for a tag you know yes yeah. there was oh, some you know keeping him safe protecting him you know which to me that you know who gets that most credit to me is seth i think seth gets a lot of credit it should get more credit for the bumps he took uh both nights totally what, what was your thoughts on on night one main event well when they announced that the tag match was going to happen i didn't have any doubt that um that cody was going to lose that cody and uh, seth were going to lose night one mm -hmm. where i was wrong was the manner in which the match trans it, the, the way that it transpired mm -hmm. i actually thought there was going to be turns in that match Mm. I thought Seth would turn and The Rock would turn. Mm. I was wrong about that. They kept it a flat. Double, like a double but I turn. Did, yeah. But I did predict. Uh, I, I did predict that, and I also predicted what would happen going into night two with Seth getting injured and not being able to be a hundred percent for his match with uh, Drew yeah. McIntyre, and um, and losing. And uh, I predicted this. This you know because you were on the episode. I think for T. I predicted that. Um, that Damien was going to cash in on that championship, yeah. even though you insisted I know. that he was going to he wanted Damien to cash in on Cody, but yeah. they had to do, I, I think it's good. They did it because then you knew like, right. If, if Damien didn't cash in, then you might be thinking he's going to show up for Cody. Yeah. So you have to yeah, no, get it. Was great. And I even, I even said it. I said, I told him like um, a couple of we weeks before yeah. I said that, Soon as Drew McIntyre wins, he's gonna do something. CM Punk is gonna yeah. get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as they announced it, um that but as soon as he was gonna become an announcer, I was like, okay, my theory from before from eighty yeah. percent, it's a hundred percent. He will interfere and they'll get that cash in. Night two happened it transpired exactly the way I thought it would. Okay. But I got night one, I expected the two turns which didn't happen. Right. Yeah. I uh yeah, I felt I, I <laughs> over the last like final two and a half three weeks leading into Mania, I was like, yeah, I think Web is right that like it because of how much uh, <laughs> they call them Cody crybabies. The fact that they were so adamant about Cody finishing his story, I almost felt like th that would have turned into white heat if if Damien cashed in on Cody, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a. Like Damien is kind of in between. He's a tweener right now, as as part of the Judgment Day, just like um, just like uh, Rhea is. Uh, Rhea Ripley, yeah, she's yeah. face, but you don't know. She's getting face reactions. Like the heels in that group are, I mean, Dominic obviously, but then you like got, uh, yeah, like those two and 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 the damn Chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but yeah, man, I. I, I, funny though that like Rhea, we bring up Rhea because that was the opening match. Like she's doing all this heel stuff, like attacking Betty, but going after Becky's daughter and all. But she still got in the arena, and I don't know how it played on TV. Rhea was getting like bigger reactions than Becky in the in the stadium. Right? I think she's. I mean, she's the now, right? She's yeah. she's the she's the new face as far as for the women's division. And I mean, when she beat Charlotte six months yeah. ago, it was like that's the passing of the torch right there, right? Because now she, she's taking out two horsemen. Yeah, horse, exactly. Um, so, yeah, and she's never going to face all four because one of them is uh, now the CEO. Never say never well, in the WWE. You never come back. You never, you never right, that's true. That's it's true. true. It's, it's the it's way thing that's right now, if she doesn't get paid, she'll be back here before you know it. Well, the problem uh, – well, yeah, we'll get into that later. But okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, don't yeah. say never say never. I'm, we, again, we're not going to – That's true. That. CM Punk is in WWE, yeah. so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no one – and I truly believe if you want, if because we we didn't get to do an episode when the punk thing happened, 
Right. I think a lot of credit beyond Triple H. You know who gets a lot of credit for Punk coming back? Nick Khan. Oh, Nick Khan. Oh. Yes, Nick Khan, definitely. <laughs> right. No, yeah, he's uh, and, and, well, yeah. And, I guess I guess Tony Khan, uh, well, Jack Perry, they get a little bit of credit, you know, for being. <laughs> no, I was saying like that. Cody put in a good word for him too. Yeah, right, Cody. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you not have a no compete? Like he literally said in that he revealed in that MMA Hour interview. Yeah. He, no yeah. he could have. He right. could have joined day day next. He could have brought that title probably on TV too if he wanted. Could have pulled yeah. a Lex Luger. He could have pulled a Lex Luger on on WCW. <laughs> I think he cares about the business and the boys. So I don't. He's very old school that way so i think right. that's why he didn't do that but he is very like i could do that you know right he could have done that yeah so anyway uh night one main event we got pretty much covered night one and night two's main event in a way but, essentially but, we'll, but we'll we haven't continue, talked much about we'll night two but yeah night two's match yeah. but right but but um, i want to just kind of go by storyline as far as well, that is a story no 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 <laughs> i know no i'm saying we're doing that so yeah. so so <laughs> night one night i mean Essentially, the the bloodline was trickled in through the entire mania, like nine one and nine two, right? They they yeah, were the Jimmy and Jay thing as well. Yeah, Jimmy good. and Jay that had a lot of implications. I thought, I, I and my thought was on that. Like after their match, when I found out it's on night one, I was like, after their match, I felt that Jay might turn again, right? Like with one for night two for the main event. Like that could have been a big surprise. Jay comes he's in. He's such a big face. He's getting he like of the of the reactions of the crowd. Like when you're walking through a stadium before a show, there are two big things. One is, as we know, our boy LA Knight. Yeah, that gets a big yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one is Yeet. Jay's yeah. so over right now. It's insane. I think maybe that's why they just did a. I was thinking Jimmy would win through some sort of disqualification or something, and they keep right. the story going. They gave him a clean win, and I think it's just because. Of, I think it's because of the momentum. They're like, nope, you're you're. You're destined for bigger things, and that carries on to Raw. But we'll get to that. Oh, by the way, you didn't yeah. like that match. I was, uh, I was. It was the least favorite of the matches of the night. Oh, the the, the Jimmy J. Like I definitely was disappointed. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that I hated the match. I will say it was my least favorite match. Of the it, night. it was least favorite. It had some lulls. It felt like I truly thought. I didn't feel like it was a blood feud, which it oh. should have felt like with a brother versus brother. You know, animosity build. I didn't get that. I mean, it's really hard to live up to Brett Owen. No, I but I mean, like, yeah. still, I wanted a little bit more like ritual in the match, you know, yeah. like it's also a little the bit shortest more match of the night. Man of yeah. How long was it from Bell to Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight thirty. Eight minutes. Wow. 30. It was short, dude. Yeah. Wow. It felt like it got time cut. Minutes. It felt like they were in Gorilla, and somebody's like, "Hey, you gotta, we gotta go. We gotta give Rock forty-five minutes." So you right. Go. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I think that was one of those last minute swerves, probably. But such a good, the, the promo video to intro that match was great. Was I love that. Great. It, it was, was great. really well done. Yeah, I'm, I am not my brother's keeper. Yeah, that was great. I love all of that. Um, so anyway, so that, that went down the way it did. And uh, um, so, yeah, let's get into um, the main event, night two. Uh, by the way, they build it as Cody never left his bus after the loss on night one. He was just he was just in his bus and and they never heard, heard of him seen him until he came out for, which is good you don't need him to do like a, i i was like uh, because they showed him in the image for the pro press conference i'm like no we don't we don't need to hear from him until he wins no right 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 did you, after after nine one what did you predict that he was going to win the title i, I, had a he would win. I think you have to stack the deck it, it, it makes more sense for the win if it's a stacked deck now, speaking of stack deck, I thought, first of all, I, I thought it was cleverly done. It was, and, and Wep and I talked about this and he, and he agrees for having put in all of these superstars to come in that match and interfere. And, and usually that becomes kind of funky. I thought they, it was masterfully done. And every person who interfered had a backstory with Roman. And it was almost like I equated it to like, uh, the Someone's demons coming to catch up with them. It's demons, and it's a, it was almost like a Thanos, right, fighting all of the yeah, Avenger Endgame. It felt they, they yeah, it, it felt that way. Yeah, this is the one time where I said overbooking was a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they got the yeah. time. Also, what I liked about the pacing of the night two main event is, you yes, I thought it was bloodline rules, but I'm like, oh, good, they're giving Cody and Roman time alone to start right. off. I feel like they did almost 18 minutes to 20 minutes alone, which is good. It's the main event, you know? Exactly. No, and, 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 and never, they're probably never going to face each other again. So let, let's put everything out there. 
Really? You don't think they're going to face each other again? I mean, I'm not saying no, never say never, but I don't see them. Maybe it's their last time at Mayhem. Maybe, maybe do the rubber match on another event. Yeah. So we'll talk about that in the I prediction. Feel like, I feel like it's not going to be their last time, but it'll be a last time on this grandest stage. Okay. Yeah. They might meet each other at some point in their career again. Yeah, yeah. Different type of storyline, whatever. But maybe different. Uh, uh, maybe things. reverse. Reversal. Not with these stakes. Yeah. You think? Okay. That's. These are great. These are great. I'm. I'm intrigued. Um. I can't wait to make. The Rock and Cody though. That might be a so, difference. So though. that's gonna. Yeah. That that thing on Raw. That was kind of funky, which I have opinions about. But I mean, um, most like we said, most of the appearances they made sense. Actually, let's get into it because so Mania main event. Did you predict that? You said you did. Yeah. That, that Cody would win. Yes. You also thought Cody. I would predicted win. Cody would win. I predicted there would be help. There will be help, sure. Yeah, we. Yeah, and I so think we all agree with I, that. Yeah, I just didn't think Undertaker would come. Yeah, back. that's that, the that, that, that that was kind of. A, yeah, a lot of people predicted. A lot of internet marks are like, "Wow, why didn't Stone Cold come out?" But to me, there's a couple things. I think Stone Cold's very particular about what he likes to come out for. Right. I think he wants it to be part of the story. I also think he had a someone who went to 38 in Texas. He had a beautiful send off in Texas. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 I yeah, just yeah. told that like so, an hour ago. Well, here's what I was thinking about Taker's return as far as bloodline and all of that is concerned. Um, I thought one, Taker gave his second loss in Mania to Roman. So we got a lot right. of people don't talk talk about that because of Brock t- taking the first one. But um he's the only two else he's had was to Roman and, and Brock at Mania. Um but that's that wasn't what I looked at it as. I looked at it as final boss kind of running the court backstage and he's the new boss in town and all that. Old boss. You know. And and Taker was the old boss in the backstage and you know in, in wrestler's court and all that, right? So it was like to me that was Taker saying, Hey, listen, you might have the money to own this, but I'm still, you know, the I'm the big dog here. So uh and I thought that's where that angle uh, kind of closed off. So it that's why great. it made sense that Austin didn't come come out. I felt like he had nothing to do with, uh, yeah, because Austin and Rock had their history, but it wasn't about the Rock. It was about the Tribal Chief, right? Exactly. And, and and so final final boss. That wasn't an angle that I thought welcomed a Stone Cold interference. Mm, so. I, really didn't. I, I have a different take on that. Okay, tell it, me. It, I mean, it, it, it's along the same lines, but it's a different take. I think that there is a part of that that is obviously real with the wrestler's court, but I think that's also a lo- uh, only known to a lot of smart fans. Mm-hmm. So course. they had to bring that up for something also that would make sense for the regular fan. And the regular fan was The Rock had been trying to put over Roman all this time, even calling back to like the Royal Rumble where they first were trying to give him this push. Yeah. But the Undertaker showed up because usually for people who are getting the rub, the Undertaker is the gatekeeper yeah. for whoever is the next generation in line. Yeah. I think he want that's where the final boss comes into play where it's like, no, you don't put people over. I put people mm-hmm. over. Like this is this is still my business. Yeah. And it's yeah. also the fortieth mania who has had a streak at mania who's been a specter who's loomed over mania for many years it's not that's why he didn't need to be there anymore than he did he came in quick and then left right exactly um no i thought uh also the fact that he was just in almost like street clothes he wasn't really in like taker well, he, he's agreed never to wear like it is some like if he knows his, his appearances since the retirement have been American badass themed, right? Or street clothes theme. Like he, he doesn't I, really want to don. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the only thing I saw is like on a few of his, like, um, a few of his, uh, like posts, late, late night um, appearances. Not necessarily late night stuff, but like at wrestling conventions. Oh yeah, yeah. If you want him to wear the taker gear, it will cost you extra. Oh okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So he's, he's he's like all of us. He'll do anything for a buck. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, have you looked at the guy's prices for a meet and greet? Oh my god. Yeah. The meet. There's a, apparently there's one option where you can do a shot with him, but it's like five hundred dollars. Jesus. <laughs> and you got to pay for the shot. So that's. <laughs> the shot's not even included. Yeah, man. That's uh. 
Yeah, but, but I think for the casual fans, Taker just showing up, it was just like, oh, Taker. Like, that's all it yeah, was. Yeah, the casual and, – and the crowd was into it. I, in the in the stadium, nobody was like, we're stone cold. I heard a couple like, oh, maybe Austin, but no one was disappointed. I'll no, say. of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're crying. Uh, Longest-lasting staple in w, uh, WWE WrestleMania history. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, There's and also I, another yeah. smart connection that a lot – smart mark connection a lot of people don't know. Dust, Undertaker's uh, – first match was survivor series in a tag match headed by dusty Rhodes. yes now, so dusty yes. kind of intro put it over undertaker as like this guy so this is like him like you're... paying it back yeah yeah so dusty so there, that's a cool little historical i love the smart mark easter egg. there's easter eggs for everybody you know uh, and and i think that's the, yeah there, there's a lot of genius in, in the booking of this um and, and the way they booked this um and uh obviously in the press conference that afterwards before he cody came out Triple H had given him that Rolex watch, right? Because because Dusty what, because Dusty they had him that off something. for yep. for Cody to take acting classes. So that I mean a that how Dusty was, was that. with him in Gorilla when he came back to the curtain. That was the point. Of it. That was I thought, yeah, man. That that he was figured like track down the serial number too. It's insane. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you know that that the company is behind Cody hundred percent. Like he's carrying this company for the face. Now. Yeah, he's the face. Um, I wanted Roman to win, and I was hoping somehow he eke it out. But as soon as I heard the three, I couldn't help but be like stoked. You late? Yeah. yeah, it was just like it was like okay, it's over, right? It was just like when I when did you wanted sense. Roman to lose? Then if you if you if you would have won, what would have been? Because at that point, it doesn't make sense. Cody's lost two in a row. It doesn't make sense for him to do it now. No, exactly. It doesn't make sense. The, and especially with all of these major superstars trying to help him get the win, and if he still yeah. lost, it would have just made all of that be a waste too. Right? Made, he said it was be the the selfish fan in him. It was the selfish fan in me, of course. You know what it was? It was just a numbers thing. I was like, I want him to beat Hogan's record, and that's what it was. But uh, but <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, oh, yeah. Hogan politicked in the end till the very end. Hogan's politics. And, that, and that's he's and, still politicking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. With fourteen surgeries, he's still politicking. Uh -huh. uh, but, but yeah, so I'm glad the way it ended. And then obviously everybody who came out and 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 you know celebrated. Uh, you had L.A. Knight. Reminiscent then... of Mania Ten. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And Dusty. I think when Dusty won, also people are lifting him up too. Right. Right. You're right. Yeah. 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 See, uh, Punk was in there, even though you know, uh, uh, Punk and Cody are, are really close, which I, I love that. And and the fact that they got to be the last two in the Rumble match, and then also like that was here, a cool moment. And that that was, was a great cool moment. moment. Yeah. Yeah. So so there's that. There's the Mania main events. Um, let's let's uh, button up all of the the Bloodline story. Uh, did you guys see? Did you guys see that footage of uh, Roman hugging Paul at the top? Yes, of the ramp? I did at the top of the ramp. Yeah. So see, that was caught. You saw that live. We, I had to see that with like a cell phone footage. Cell phone yeah, footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To when me, you this saw that, did you catch that uh, it live when it was happening? I caught it live. I caught it at the stage. And to me, this speaks to the fact that uh, Roman. I think the tribal chief character is done. I think if he comes back, it's going to be a completely different iteration. Different yeah, iteration. yeah, yeah. And and there was a Triple H uh, uh, post that he said, what, when Roman is like Roman, wait till what you see what's next for Roman. He was well, like, you know they've already posted a uh, footage of Roman working out. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. He, saw that. Yeah. He said he said I mourned yesterday, but today is day one. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, and then uh, listen, I love all of that, and I think and the guy's also been fighting leukemia too lately. I don't know oh if you my heard god, that. that's crazy. That in itself is like yeah. And times That's also why his reign couldn't last as long as it, it usually any longer than this. It would have taken toll on him. He hasn't, even though he's been used sparingly in the last year. Yeah, the type of stuff that he's going through just to fight. So many physical him. things too. It's been wild. I think, and he's lost some weight. I mean, not just from working out, but he's lost some weight. You could see it. Like Less he's lean. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, he uh, takes the oral version of. Um, of a chemo. Yeah, chemo. he does. Like it's it's yeah, an yeah. orally um, ingested. And, 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 I want all these guys to be healthy. I know Seth's been working a lot too, bumping like crazy. Like, take a little time off. Be with the fan. Both have kids. Both of them had kids too. Like, right. take right. a little day off. It's okay. This is reset time. We don't need you every week. It's okay. No, we don't need to see them all the time. Yeah, and then uh, 
And um, all all angles and fandom aside, I wish both of them, you know, a quick recovery. Same for Punk. I hope Punk is back to 100% in no time. My uh, father said, <laughs> take some time off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's button up the bloodline uh, angles uh, on Raw. So... Well, wait. Let's not go to Raw. Let's finish WrestleMania. Well, no, no. I'm talking about Bloodline, because then we'll, we'll, we'll. I know, but we we, we, we you keep bouncing back and forth. However, you gotta do this. Up show, I'm just... And we're, we're, well, we, we, well, we got, I was just I was looking gonna, at the stories, but yeah, yeah I know the yeah. stories are gonna all move into Raw every single last. Okay, one Shiki, you're the boss. You're <laughs> the boss. You, you, you say. You I was say. Gonna say Shiki, you don't want to mess with. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, real quick. Uh, Jimmy and Jay's spot off. We got that off that ramp. That that. Yes. Made up yeah. For, that, that was better than their whole match. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all thought that near it. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was uh yeah. I, I almost feel like they they wanted a, another shot at like yeah. getting a better spot in. And so that was that was that I feel. How about John Cena's bald spot? Dude. Well, he is married to a Persian, so well um, <laughs> no, but I mean like 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 they usually do a pretty good job of like not getting the angle and exposing it too much yeah, yeah. on TV. But oh man, that is the one thing about WrestleMania and the great camera work is sometimes it's too good. It caught that bald spot. Uh, you can see how much hair that guy is really losing. I also think about that bald spot. I don't think he minds it. If he he, it's not like he doesn't have the money to get implants. You know what I mean? It's he doesn't he, care. Yeah. He doesn't care. He, he likes it humanizes he, him too. I think it makes him because he Austin Theory did a promo with him for last year's build where he mentions references the ball spot and John Cena goes, Yeah, I have a ball. Like he doesn't he knows he doesn't, yeah, he's not he's not affected by it. Um yeah, that's true. All right, let's go through this. Let's go there. through it. So let's start with the okay, what, what, there's other championship matches. Right. What I'd like to say is this let's talk about that world heavyweight title match. Because we have to admit, Seth worked the hardest at, at this mania. Like, I agree. I, I feel he worked. He essentially did three matches, right? Yeah. Essentially, he was in three. So he finished night one, 45 minutes, as you said. Bruised and battered. Bruised and battered. Open. Started open night two. And, and Drew McIntyre is, is, is not a soft match. He's no. kicking his ass. Hard hitting. Hard it hitting. started with match. the – I don't know if you guys yeah. noticed. It was very rough. It felt stiff. It, it did. It did feel stiff, yeah. So he 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 basically, you know – he he get he loses that match, and and he, he was he had a bruise on his eye, like crying. Obviously, like that's an emotional moment for him. He got uh, the little. He get, he, it's weird. He because in the arena around me, maybe it was just because they were older. We were giving him like face like cheers, and I kept yelling. He took us through the pandemic, which he did, and he never he got that moment. So he got he the good. good he got like a mini mania moment, like hugging the wall, like as the faith. And keep in mind, he's a heel. Yeah. He's getting the face treatment. It was very interesting to me. Did you call it? Did you predict that he would take the title? I had a feeling that in in the last few weeks, I'm like, Drew, Seth isn't walking out. I knew Seth wasn't going to walk out. I had a feeling Drew would either get it or Damien would get involved, but Drew would still get it in some way. I knew Damien ah, would get it. Okay. But Drew was still going to get it. And he, we can see it was only five minutes. You can say he was humiliated, but he won. He got it. You yeah, 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 yeah. got it. What do uh, what, what, you think? Uh, the match was, a, I mean, it was a good match. I mean, actually, I mean, I mean, more than a good match. I yeah. really enjoyed the match. And only but 10 it was minutes. what I expected it to be. How know? many was, how much time was it? Uh, 10 05, according to Wikipedia. Bell to bell. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, considering he was injuring a supposedly kayfabe. Injured yeah. Seth Rollins. That made yeah. sense, you know. No, um, you know, it was better than him just Claymore kicking. What I thought, well, like I didn't think oh, that was going to happen. We thought he but, was going to win in a squash. But like, when, when it like, happened, yeah, yeah. But when it happened, when he can't Claymore kicked him immediately, initially in that moment, I thought it was going to be a squash. I'm like, no. And then they went in and they gave him the ten minutes. So after that, it, it was everything that I expected it to be. Yeah. I enjoyed the match. I'm glad they didn't go with a squash. Right. I and like the tease, though. I like the tease of it. It was a good tease. The tease was good. But if it would have been more than a tease, then I would have been <laughs> but that's disappointed. Great. But that was great storytelling. I also thought Drew would win. Um, I was hoping I, that <laughs> Damien wouldn't cash in on, on that. But if he, I I was hoping he would cash in in the same manner Seth cashed in in 31. In triple threat. But still right. but, yeah. but it didn't happen. So then when it didn't happen, I was like, it's not going to happen. So then I got excited about Damien doing later. Okay. And then, 
He's like, damn, dude. On the, set, the, the, the punk angle I'm on on this was beautifully done. I don't know what you guys could hear in the arena, but from from uh, uh, I've gone back and reviewed because I'm like punk yeah. commentary. I have to go back and review that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but I'm assuming you didn't hear any of it, and then they fight, and then you you hear Damien's uh, music. But from you've seen it, so like the video, I, I, the fact that punk was just he. I never thought punk is gonna get physical. I just thought it was gonna be a a verbal spat. Drew goes and and you know gets his flowers and and goes. Well, to the, the, the spat even teased that. The spat even teased that because when they were having it, like you said, if you listen to the commentary, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's nodding. He's like, he's okay. nodding. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I won. I won. Like he's basically telling. He's like, yeah, you did. You did. And he's like, he's. He, what more do you want, Drew? Like, he, yeah, he says more. Than, what more do you want? He's like, what was that weird, creepy sauntering he did with the? Remember, when he was like a snake. He was like leering on the desk. It was. Oh, he did, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I want a picture. I wanted to this in my the the wall at home. And not in those words, but basically, yeah, 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 yeah. like that. And he's like, he's like. You he he he's like this is my he's like why are you doing this he's like this is my moment yeah he's like yeah it is your moment why are you making it about me <laughs> right, right, right. they teased it the whole time like punk's not gonna do anything he's just gonna shake it off then the moment he turns him around he pulls the yeah he, he pulls his leg out from under beautifully very good like, beautifully hundred percent thing the bra- the whole brace that we saw since raw and chicago he's been wearing that and he never belt. saw it coming no never, never thought he'd rip it off the first he worked did, great he did brilliantly he gets up he's about to go after punk but his back yeah. is totally turned and he takes the briefcase right to the head yeah and in that moment i sat there and went i prayed for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah so yeah i thought that was yeah. masterfully yeah. He's got the biggest like he got a big face reaction from he's kind of a face turn now no, dude, that's what I'm saying. He was a tweener anyway, but like, I always thought Damien, once he cashes in, he's gonna be, he's gonna get cheered. Unless it was on Cody, but <laughs> I also had a feeling when they lost both titles, and we didn't really talk about the ladder match, but when they right. lost both titles, I'm like, oh, he's doing something. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. If we were paying attention, the entire trajectory of Mania was was hinting, like it was like you had to pay attention to it, and it was like all the all the multiple angles that these guys were involved in. All Maybe the that's what makes night one, one, night two good. You gotta have things connect. You can't just have two separate cards. And the order of the matches was dictating what was going to yes, happen. Exactly. Right? And we talked about that. We were like, it depends where they put the Seth match. Depends where they like that was going to determine what was going to happen later. So it's the same thing as if you're putting together like an album or a comedy set. Yeah. You know, exactly. in order is very important. All the little details matter. Absolutely. Yeah. That's true. Um, but when when uh when punk attacked him i thought for a second like he's actually he, he's cleared but i don't think he's still cleared he's just he decided to do that but uh i mean he looks like he's almost there but no, he, he's not cleared because if you notice even when he hit um drew he hit him with a brace he didn't hit him with that arm no but he's the other arm and hit him with the kept it protected i think yeah yeah, yeah yeah I think it's it's mostly healed. He's just not cleared. That's that's where I feel he's. I at. love the blow, the 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 callback to Money in the Bank with the. Mwah. Yes, yes, he did do that. He did do that, to to uh, to his wife. Um, he's a, a, but like a, I don't think he's into Vince. Think, if you remember, he did that to Vince anti, before he left the ring. He's an antihero, basically. Who punk? Yeah. Punk, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, punk is always going to be the antihero. But but right now he's more of a he's he's getting cheered he's, like a face. He's a. He's getting cheered like a face, but he's doing it doing heel tactics. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. He's not like the punk of the twenty like the summer of punk punk is this is not the punk people want. That you know, we're we're excited about this punk, like the more wiser punk and like he's like the punk that's not here to make friends. He's here to, <laughs> I'm here to make friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So there um, was that. Um one yeah. of my favorites, just to go back quickly, because well, we're on the subject of punk, but that raw Chicago eighteen minute segment. Dude. one of my favorite segments of the year so far i loved it yeah it was great it was great um and uh who chose you say it. <laughs> what what paragon oh yeah he was trying to get him to say vince yeah. yeah 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 oh that was that's say a, his name yeah right <laughs> only punk could do something like that yeah, exactly. also, i say yeah. mania seeing punk in a suit yeah well, <laughs> seeing, well the first time i saw punk, yeah i think punk like after being like like he had a full-blown on like 
like three piece suit. He had a breast. Uh, I mean, he had the um, yep. he had the vest underneath. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. he had a blue one, I think, on one of the nights. I think. Right, he did. He did. No, he he was decked out like the nature boy. Um, he also woo! went to. I don't know if this is reported. He went to the tryouts too. That they had mania tryouts and and if, if he had Philly tryouts for the younger stars. Oh, did they? I didn't see that. No, there's a there's a backstage picture of him in a Bret Hart hoodie, and I think that's look. He he really. If look, we're 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 probably in his last run, whatever you want to call it, Twilight one, Twilight year. I think yeah. it's great. He can definitely provide vis- wisdom to new guys, and he likes to work with new guys. You can say what you want about his AW run; he was always about elevating new talent. So I think if yes. the easiest transition for him is per- per- performance center, something coaching, something trying. totally, totally, yeah, he could do that for sure. So okay, so we got the the two heavyweight titles on the men's side. Uh, we talked about those. And we um, also talked about the Uso match. The Uso the, match. Yes. Um, let's talk about the women's heavyweight, t- uh, women's titles. Um, you had Becky and Rhea. We talked about it briefly. Um, great opening. It was a great match. Great yeah. match. Yeah. Um, I thought that um, that um, uh, that um, Rhea would win. No, I actually thought that Becky would win. Oh. Um, I was wrong. Yeah. Um, obviously. But um, the way that they did it makes sense. I always say if it makes sense, I have no problem with it. Um, so, and the fact that they still made Becky look strong in defeat, they had to, she had to be taken out with a riptide to the turnbuckle and yeah. then another riptide yes. to be finished. So she was still in defeat. She was still able to look strong. Right. So I think looked that- looked strong, uh, very poetic with the, kind of a parallel to Charlotte. Um, Ripley match last year too. Both yeah. horsemen kind of looked at her when they lost. Charlotte smiled. Becky didn't smile. So maybe that makes me think we get another shot. Maybe you do. Yeah. A, uh, you do maybe a stipulation match next time. Maybe I don't. I don't know because look, you and she invoked the name of her daughter. I just I feel like this feud isn't done. That's what I thought because if you're gonna bring someone's daughter into a yeah. promo and you still win. <laughs> Like I feel like that means that means it's not done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was yeah, I thought it was a great match. Um, I mean they're they're pushing Rhea like you know I I feel like this is the great though she's definitely uh, a face a new face. Of if the she's definitely a face, despite the fact that she's mommy with Dom and everything. Like even the Dom like what's hilarious is she's a face. She's getting cheered, and Dom is the like the biggest heel in in the company right now. You know, like so, like and then see them next to each other, like that raw segment. Dom comes out booze, and Rhea comes out nah. Like they have to keep them, like they do slow entrances so that you can hear her cheers. Like people, yeah, 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 yeah. That's by design, yeah, for sure. And I feel like, um, I feel like the push Rhea is getting right now is, um, is is what I feel like China deserved, right? And and they're kind of like, she's you know she's a bigger girl, right? And like, and I feel that. Um, this push for Rhea is almost like poetic in that sense that it's like, I feel like if China was in her prime now, right. Rest her soul. Like she would, she would be like the perfect opponent yeah. for, for Rhea. Throwing but, people around rag dolling. Yeah. 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 Like and, and exactly. So I don't, anyway, that was what I was thinking when Rhea was, is, is on her push right now. And, and China uh, would do well in this era, but. You know, China also served her purpose. There probably might China not... wasn't a technician, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, there may. I mean, she. She would have been, though. I think. I mean, in, in this she, she would have been taught her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's for not sure. like she didn't need to be a technician for a time because there was nobody for her to really right uh, utilize those skills. I with. mean, she had to squash all the women and the and the and, and, and then and then work with Jericho. She had to work with men just to kind yeah. of yeah. And she was Eddie's mama Sita, yeah. Um, but uh. Mama. Original mommy Cedar. <laughs> yeah, it, makes, it, it made sense for Rhea to win, even though, like I said, I thought Becky would win. I actually thought Becky would win because of interference. I thought that Ripley would lose because uh, of an ongoing story that still is potential to go on with Liv Morgan yeah. and her revenge uh, trajectory. Yes. Um, they've been playing that up over before Mania and right. that's Has good. Liv and Rhea had a match? I'm trying to remember. Like, for the, once, she's, once Rhea won the title, I've lived in we had a full singles match. No, no. because uh, Liv ended up getting injured. Oh, in, injured, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, she's married to, I don't know how many people know this, she's married to Bo Dallas, a.k.a. Taylor Rotunda, so I think she was dealing with that right. loss as well. Yeah. By the way, uh, we I would be remiss if we don't mention this. Um, 
the way they immortalized Bray Wyatt in the, in the uh, oh, Hall of Fame. Beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. In the documentary, uh, there's a new Bray Wyatt statue. There was a great Bray Wyatt panel on, at WWE yeah. World. You can watch the panel. Uh, you know, if you watch Mike Rotunda's speech, yes. <laughs> they, he gets very emotional. It, 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 it's of course, crazy. of course. Yeah, and that was the first time we saw Bo. Like, and, and I think yeah. we haven't seen him since he was uh, the old, old thing. <laughs> I do think at some, I mean, Bra- look, Braun is still there. You could bring back Rowan. You could do something with Alexa. You could do something with Liv. You could have a window like a like a wyatt you could have a well, they, they were talking about they're teasing Hall. that with alexa right now with her uh with vignettes yeah and, and right, uncle there was a howdy. vignette at raw i forgot yeah 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 right. right and the uncle howdy stuff they, they it could easily go on and carry the story forward so um and you but, know they're uh, gonna get whoever is part of that faction is getting face reactions immediately Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, Gray is gonna be a part of that no matter what like yeah. he's just gonna be because people love him man and, and the the wrestlers love them and the, and the people love them so he, he's um and i think that's There's gonna old interview with uh bray as wyndham where they just asked like will you ever tag with your brother and he goes there people have this is when bray when bowl was still doing the bowl leaves stuff where he was kind of a jobber and bray's like people haven't seen what this man can do in the ring he's he's dest i really hope he's world champion so is oh, that, that another story to finish everybody i love I'm that dude world. exactly i love that yeah. So there is. So there was the one, uh, the Rhea Becky match. Um, yeah. Okay. I just say it was a great. Uh, it was a great way to kick off Mania. I'll leave it at that. I we love pretty it. Pretty much said what. Yeah. I need to say about that. Match. And then on the other side, we had EO and um, we had the match and uh, Bailey. Um, I thought Bailey would win. I I I think it was her moment. She hasn't had that moment at Mania, and she deserved it. And um, I thought. It was it was well put. What did you think of the uh, th- that main event? I thought it was a great match. I know I've been saying that a lot lately. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe did the crowd was... seemed tired on TV. Um, hmm. a little bit. I think I th- they did they didn't give it the um. They weren't as excited about uh, during the match um, as they were for others. But th- again. Um, I think it had to do with like the pacing of the show more or less. Pacing, yeah, and the spot um, because play. honestly, there were some pretty good spots in that match. Oh, I was on my feet for it, but I know around me they were very. Quiet. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just made sense. I, I knew Bailey was going to win this one. Um, yeah. They were leading up to it. Damage Control had already lost, uh, yeah. you know, the night before. So yeah. Um, I, I don't think that by any means this storyline is over. No. Uh, but I do uh, think that it was coming to Bailey. Um, it's probably one of the only things left in Bailey's uh, career that she hadn't done was uh, right. compete for the title in a solo match on WrestleMania. On WrestleMania and win. Win in a solo match at Mania and win the Royal Rumble leading into that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. I'm happy for her, man. She does I, – I, but ba- I mean, not just because Bailey is from NorCal, but it's uh, it's right. <laughs> it's more, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's uh, but it's not even about that. I just think she was um, as far as the like, I feel like she always had to be the last one out of the four horsewomen mm-hmm. to get her chance. I feel like the other. It used to be Becky until she became two belts. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Asha also, I don't. Did she ever win in a solo? She carried the belt to that mania with Bianca and lost. Yeah. Yes. Asha's number one at Mania. Yeah. Well, nice nice. Line, if you remember. That's right. That's right. That's also, yeah, that's a big part of it. Um I I loved it. I loved the the women's uh, title matches. Both were great. Uh I thought they escaped from that uh the the first uh attempt at the rose plant was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yes. was a good that was great. Good yeah. The great spot, yeah. Great counters in that match. I don't think the crowd was appreciating the counters as much as they could have. Right, I, I yeah I agree. It was uh, um and then she loved uh they both love Macho Man so that I feel like the yes. counter oh the and, diving we 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 stood on our feet for that it was great that was yeah exactly so that was beautifully done sorry Shiki uh, <laughs> but we love, we love that oh, yeah, sorry Shiki yeah 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 well we hope you forgot um <laughs> but no um yeah those was good my favorite match of the of the entire Mania if I'm being like taking the like fanboy out of it just from like 
uh, it got my attention the most. I have to go with uh, Sami Zayn. I yeah. thought, I thought uh, psych, psych, the psychology of that match, um, the way that Kevin Owens returned a favor, right? Uh, or I mean, uh, KO did, was standing right at Gorilla. It was so him, beautiful. Yeah, it was like some Rocky like underdog montage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that was beautifully done. And 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 when Gunther did uh, everything he did, and then. The only criticism I have is like a hair, like, is, and I'm being nitpicky, is, is how Sammy like began to kind of convulge to like fight out of this like beat down. And he started to like essentially Hulk, Hulk up. Little, yeah. yeah, he was like hulking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's the only part I was like, that, that kind it of. looked more like convulsing. Maybe. It did. It did. It didn't it did look, look a little. It was a little like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah it, it didn't look. Yeah, it didn't look powerful. It just looked. Yeah, it just looked. Whatever he did, though, like, listen, we can nitpick it all we want. Yeah. It got the necessary pop. Oh, yeah. And the he, stadium. Oh, the stadium didn't care about convulsing. They were on his yeah, side. They, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I would say next to the main events, that was the most for me emotionally, psycholo- like the, the psychological, the pacing of the. They really between all, if you look at the build from the Raws, where he was losing to Bronson Reed, getting yeah. torn up, he he lost to Drew right. three four weeks before that too. Yeah. You did not think you, they really made you not think he was going to win. Like they really swerved, not swerved you, but they really stacked the deck against him. And you, that's you true. Yeah. At the, till the very end of that match, you did not. You thought Gunther was going to take his head off. No, for sure, for sure. The shots to the wife watching. He's like, oh, you're going to disappoint your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when he started doing that, I was like, okay, Sammy's going to win. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, then I got Because he's done that to other people's opponents before, like Chad Gable, and he still won. That's true. That was part of his his character. That's true, but Sammy's different, I feel. It was, well, I don't think that Sammy was so much different than the event was different. Sure. If this would have happened at, like, a SummerSlam, I think Sammy would have lost. Well, I think it's You know. And Mania and Philly, underdog, Rocky, you know, you need right, that. Kind of Rocky right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This, I mean, they used a lot of movie analogies in these yeah. stories. This, this, yeah. this. Yeah. Um, did you predict it? The Sammy Zayn yeah. win? Yeah. I told you. I you did. You did. You did. Yeah. I will say this Dave Meltzer, kiss my ass. That's a five star <laughs> match. That <laughs> yeah. was a five star match. What did he? I don't even. You know what? I don't even care. I don't know what he gave it, and I don't give a shit. Like he can fight me over it. Dave Meltzer, that's a five star match. Oh, it was great. Yeah, because the psychology matters. It's not just about the the execution. Everything of, was in that match. Right. Everything was in it. Yeah. You got all the technical spots. You got all the Gunther spots. You got the brawling. You got everything. You got the story. Again, Gunther is really good. Walter Gunther, whatever you want to call him. Again, yeah. he's been in this business forever. He's really good at making a lot out of little mo- like these little touches and the way he presents himself shine and flourish. He's he's a very smart wrestler. He's a very yeah. smart. He's, he's a, a, smarter, he, not harder for sure. Exactly, he's hundred yeah. percent. I love the fact that you can never predict which finisher Gunther is going to use. Yes, 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 that's true. He, he always yes. finishes you with something different. Right, like one of his like four finishers. Yeah, and then Sammy uh-huh. brought back the El Generico move. He brought back the old uh, yeah, the the brainbuster off the brain uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's true. Yeah. The, see that that's be, again, good writing, man. I'll take that over, you know, over like just two great wrestlers going at it. I thought <laughs> yeah, the writing matters so much. Um, so the only, okay. The other match that I was actually shocked at the results was the triple threat for the U S title. Okay. So I, ha- there was a lot of predictions that I got incorrectly, but I wasn't surprised. This one, I was surprised that Logan kept the title. Uh, like, he remained U.S. champion. Not only he remained U.S. champion, he remained U.S. champion against two former heavyweight champions, right? It's like KO. I mean, everybody wanted Logan to lose, and he still won, you know? So, to me, uh, that was a bit of a surprise. So I was and- looking at it from he lost to Seth last year. He needs – he's chicken shit heel, whatever dip shit heel, but he, he needs his reign of terror to continue, and I think – you know, look, I'd rather have him that than near the, the main event scene. I'd rather keep him on with the U.S. title, let him elevate that title a little bit. It's fine. It gets gets people talking. Listen, both Randy and Kevin don't need wins right now. They've been able to do a lot just without titles. Look how many main events Kevin Owens has had without yeah. having the Universal Champion. So to me, it's okay that they, you know, I thought it was a good showcase for both of them. And I want that ECW KO Mania shirt. I don't know why that shirt is not available. That design. No, yeah, no, that's true. 
both of them are at the twilight of their careers too. Yeah, like they're coming towards the end. They gotta I'm not saying that they gotta go and lose every match, but it's good for them to put over younger talent. Logan Paul um, um, was prior at this time last year. He was uh, uh, he had a lo- he had more losses than wins. Yeah, exactly. so they really needed to build him as a credible heel, even exactly. though he was a sneaky heel. Um, to make him a legitimate character. Obviously, the branding and his um, reach outside the WWE audience plays a factor in him promoting, um, you know, or representing the company with the title and other places. Right. It made sense for him to stay champion. I feel like he'll elevate the title a little bit more, and then somewhere down the road, it's, his loss will be used to put somebody over. Exactly. There's still unfinished business with Ricochet from the yeah. SummerSlam match that they yeah. announced. What about Samantha Irvin? Like, she was great. How how did people? I know she was getting a lot of cheers. Um, in, no, as her, you could now. tell her. I, I go back and watch some of her those reels of her like announcing the big yeah. moments. Yeah. To me, she's up there with some of the best announcers ever. I think the reason for that is she's so pure. Yeah. She's, she's pure. just pure. She feels it like genuinely feels it like she, she was crying when she did the uh the cody yeah when the cody won she was like in legitimately fanning out um yeah it was great which is fine that this is this is this is wrestling you this isn't ufc no exactly 100 100 um okay the only other match i can think of that is needs to be discussed because of the people involved is uh l a night yeah <laughs> and aj styles um what do you so match should have been that's what i call it yeah those guys look like they really wanted to kill each other that's what the uso should have been oh yeah i mean that yeah. was such a great angle they had the thing at the press conference which my friend that was beautiful i love that the whole my on friend Kevin Kellum was actually interviewing la knight when the chair the he like he got hit in the shins with the chair my friend oh really so, <laughs> to me the angle was great too you know that's true. The, the the fight in the press conference there, I thought the way they did that and they let him go and, yeah. the, and the fact that it didn't feel like a WWE backstage fight. No, it felt, it felt intense. It felt like two it guys. Felt real. It felt almost yeah. real. And, and I think that they were they were throwing in some real. I mean, uh, AJ's nose got busted open. Yeah, um, and and that was not that was not planned. That was definitely. I think, uh, yeah, you want to look, it's mania season. There aren't a ton of big singles matches on this card. Oh. that weren't for any sort of title it was a it was to me it was an intense feud but i'm glad again la knight needed a he didn't need a tag team win he didn't need a ladder match win. he no. needed a big singles win. this is his first that was his first mania match how insane is that? i know I a know. big singles win um i did not mind this with the one sponsorship i didn't mind i didn't i didn't care for the dude wipes ads i didn't care for the american home <laughs> but Slim Jim with LA Knight makes sense. He's in the commercials. They're a product associated. When you think of wrestling, you think of Slim Jim. So I don't. Which know. almost canceled once Vince the whole Vince situation oh happened. That, well, that's what escalated. Are you with the Slim Jim can, uh, the, uh, ads? What? Yeah. This guy like LA Knight is getting about to get his leg pounded into the um, into a um, uh, the pole yeah. by AJ Styles, and the pole says snap into it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Do you think that was on? I don't think that was. I think that was. But that it, was a coincidence. But even yeah. if it was a coincidence, it's a funny one. No, it's great. It's a good <laughs> one. Yeah. Someone, someone did a good job with the rigging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know. Why in my section, the crowd was mad. They, so apparently, there was some lighting issues. I didn't notice it on my side. We were just like looking at the ring, and we were into it. We loved it. I heard about the lighting issues, but I didn't see any on um on yeah. my end when I was watching. I'm it glad on. it wasn't noticeable from the the home viewer perspective. No, yeah, I, I didn't notice anything. Um, but yeah, I love that match. I I I thought um LA Knight was going to win and and it happened. He needed the push. It seems like you also agree that he I needed... agree he needed the win. I like AJ's new theme though. Maybe AJ can be a good heel, you know, going forward. I, I don't think it's over though. No, I, I don't think it's over because of of the nature of that presser. That yeah. presser fight I felt did more to keep this going than the actual match. Um so uh but yeah, Bottom line, uh, I thought they're going to do a backlash coming up. I don't see the harm in it, which is in three weeks, by the way. 
Yeah, then, three weeks. I don't Brent. see the harm in keeping this feud going one more. Give him a steel cage match or something. Like give. Yeah, I, yeah, hundred percent. You don't need to start a new feud with him right now. And He's don't call it WrestleMania back. backlash, please. Just call it backlash. I think they got rid of that, if I'm not mistaken, because they didn't do it last year either. I mean, again, good on Triple H for turning these like the the B shows, B pay per views into these like big global events. Yeah. You know, we're almost at a point where we don't have like the four main ones anymore, right? I mean, they 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 have the, I mean, they have they still have that, uh, like you know, big four field. Those are usually big four field, field because of the names and the history. But history, yeah. But like Money in the Bank is a big, I think, is one of the big. They're also, big not going to be. They don't have an event in America until SummerSlam. All the other events are global, which I think is cool. In and it's great. That, that, it's tour the world, man. Um, much more tiring on the wrestlers, which I I can understand, but yeah. well, more of a reason like, that they should have breaks. How do you but, feel? Uh, well, I'm going to ask you, Pratik. I know how Hedge feels, even though he will tell the world how he feels about this um, this tag team turmoil match that split up the tag titles. Oh yeah, I was for I, it. I, I, go ahead. No, I I thought it was I thought it was um, I thought it was time. I think it, it. I think each brand needs its own tag titles, and and it's it's uh, for for like the whole undisputed. I mean, by the way, they're starting to get away from calling it the undisputed heavyweight champion. Um, right now, it's a WWE WWE. You're champion. going back to WWE champion. champion and heavyweight champion, just like it was 15 Ooh, years ago. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Um, so so the same thing will go with the tag titles. Whatever they do with the main titles, with the heavyweight titles, they go with the tag titles. I'd like so to I'll see some new design for sure <laughs> yes new designs i'm cool with with um i'm cool with the way they they split them up i didn't care for austin theory and 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 walter to uh, to waller waller, waller effect waller you effect. already know how i feel about those two guys. yeah i know you don't care for them um but but that's you know. kind of the point i think is give give the heels because they're gonna be on smackdown um yeah. let you can build pretty yeah. deadly Heels though, like it's like this really cheesy heel. Well, right? Waller is. I don't think Theory is. Theory isn't funny to me. But Waller, well, Theory's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Theory definitely uh, struck out, man. At some point, he. I mean, he. Be, he almost. He almost was like. He was almost the chosen one. Who chose one. you? Say his name for Theory too. <laughs> exactly right. Oh, well, Theory's chosen guy. Yeah. But I did like uh, Awesome Truth getting the titles. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful. And you yeah, had to was... give them the win in some capacity. And, mania, mania. and that was Truth's first Mania win. Yeah. First, first, I think, main, like, not a kickoff show, like, match. I don't think he's done much. Right. First legitimate title other than the yeah. 24 7 title. Yeah, 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 yeah. He might have been U.S. Yeah. champion once, maybe, but, you know. Um, I know. Uh, and the so guy can I'm, still I'm, go. He put he does know some good like he knows how to wrestle technically. They just don't use him in that capacity. So it's been great seeing him get physical. It's been great seeing him throw, you know, real punches, real emotions. With the judgment day stuff has been like it, it doesn't feel like hokey comedy. It feels like actually funny. Like it's great. It's the beautiful. one bit where he's like they're crowding him and they're near the near the announce table and he looks at the camera and goes, Go to break, go to break. And then, <laughs> yeah, break. Yeah, yeah. And then Finn goes. We'll break you. Like it, the, the yeah. timing of it is perfect. Yeah. No, I think so too. I agree. I agree. The whole Judgment Day stuff is hilarious, and and I, I hope and they it keep keeps going. a few going with them too because eventually yeah. they're going to get it. Or maybe which is I don't know. If, do are we getting into predictions yet, or kind of where it's going? Let's go to let's go let's well, let's, 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 let's go up. into Raw and and well, let, well, let's wrap this up. We we have to we can't do this without wrapping it up with um, Jade Cargill's debut. Jade Cargill, okay. Jade, Jade Cargill's, Cargill's debut. Great. I mean, all women of color, very progressive match, kind of, you know, yes. his pet project, not Vince, sorry, Triple H's pet projects put in the one match. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I wasn't crazy about the that part of it necessarily. I've, only because it felt like they just did it quickly. Like they didn't take their time with building that properly. And that, no. that's my that's my only criticism of that. Otherwise, yeah, I'm well, so happy. there to serve the purpose. You're not going to put Jade in the singles yet. You just want to make her look strong. Oh, no, for sure. But, I mean, I'm saying get the trio together, but but give it more feel, feeling. Give it more yeah. reason. It felt right? slapped together. Just like with the yeah. Rey Mysterio, uh, that felt slapped together. Andrade, too. yeah. That was another one, yeah. But yeah, good spots had, in yeah, good spots. But, yeah, the, again, there is... I, it was just good to see Andrade back in that match. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was probably like the highlight for me is just seeing Andrade, and I always like it when Dominic Mysterio, you know, 
Yeah. Doesn't go over. <laughs> um, the crowd yeah. loved the, obviously seeing Jay, I like Jason Kelsey. Just, I listened to his podcast a little bit. And I like the Amazon documentary. So nice to see him get physical. And he famously wore a luchador mask when he was getting drunk. Which, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. it was a good callback. I like that. Part. Right, 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 right. No, that's true. Actually, there's only one, uh, now that I think of it, there is one WrestleMania match that I was not crazy about. And I think it's Other the only one. Usos? Uh, it's, well, the Usos, like I said, I liked it. It just wasn't what I thought it would be. Okay. I thought it was underwhelming. We expected more. But it, yeah. Yes, but it was still a solid match. I think I know a match going. that wasn't, I, I, that I almost forgot just because it's so forgettable. Oh, the street but fight. The, it, it was the street. It was a street fight. The Street Profits and uh, yeah. Bobby Lashley. And... It was. It wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, Bubba, the the surprise of Bubba was great too. They really did a lot to make the crowd into it, and I think a lot of that was having Snoop Dogg on commentary, having Bubba and Bubba, Bubba were there. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of a lot of extras just to kind of because you know, but I've seen Bobby Lashley not get big reactions in arenas. So. But I've just I know I, I just feel like I, even though I know they're trying, I just feel like. Carrying Cross has run his course. He just he can't do anything with it. Yeah. And yeah. AOP has just gotten boring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're not, it's not, um, AOP should just be like either make them like silent killers and just run them through like monsters or I don't know, use them in developmental and NXT and just build guys. Build yeah. Bases. I, I, I agree with what that. What else do you do? I don't know. There was nothing intriguing about that. Like nothing excited me about that match. You sure about that? I thought you, you were always intrigued by Scarlet. <laughs> Scarlet has Scarlet's the, his girl. Next, uh, to, <laughs> next to live, you are a single you. man, so you know. I am a single man. Um, hey, there's a well, the table, the table that b- broke early. That was great. We love yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. The that crowd was... in the arena laughed. They liked the because again, it was, it's a gimmick match. If you notice the dreaded number two spot that you know Bubba talks about, the dreaded number two spot of Mania or gimmick matches on both nights. First night was a ladder. Second night was street fight. They kind of pair paste it very. I like the ordering of the matches very well. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. I agree. Yeah. Um, I guess other than Bailey's match, I felt that could have gotten a better spot. But um, yeah. But anyway, now we can move on. To now Raw. we can move on. So Raw after Mania, uh, Cody opens and and um, here comes Rock. I honestly went my. Uh, it was cringy. I, I agree thought, with the crowd. This is awkward. This was so awkward. <laughs> And then, you know what it did? It felt like, I felt like that was a written thing for Cody and Rock to do. And it was probably, I don't know whose idea it was, but I felt bad for Cody because it kind of diminished, it, it diminished his title. Like it felt like, like Roman never gave his title to anyone else to hold, right? I mean, other than Heyman, but Heyman was like, he, he was like his wise man. The guy, yeah. But but you and Rock just beat the shit out of each other like less than forty eight hours ago, for then for then for then for Rock to just come out and almost be like I'm I'm happy for you like you beat you beat the tribal chief, it's like, a and and maybe maybe they're working me and working us or I'll say me because I'm the one that's clearly frustrated, but it was like, maybe they're setting something up and for Roman and Rock to finally face off and and and. And I think this idea of Rock saying, "Hey, I've never held that title," right? Like he's he they do the switcheroo, the People's Championship title getting switched to. to... It's clear it really did diminish the title because I I, I share annoyance with you. Yeah. That because yeah. you're asking to hold a title that is the biggest title in the company that it feels something. And then Cody goes, only if you let me hold that one, no. which is worthless. It has no meaning other than Muhammad to be symbolic yeah. as an award, but it's not an award a title. It's not a title. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like the FTW title, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it, 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 to signify that Muhammad Ali said, yes, you can use my name. It was I thought it was just something for the Hall of Fame, just like a, like a tribute. I didn't think it would be used in story. I, 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 this this is what I thought of it. I. I after thinking about it like 24 hours later i just feel like okay well even triple h is not going to get every angle correct right he's gonna he's gonna have mistakes and that's okay listen they came off the biggest night that they yeah. had in no 100 percent. yeah it's gonna be really hard to follow that up one night later so they're they can be afforded a few i mean i thought it was steps. a great raw i'm not i'm not diminishing the raw like, i will say this though despite the fact that the, the promo um diminished the feeling of the title 
I do like that people's title. Looking at it visually, yeah. that thing pops. I would not mind having a replica and having the rock sign that. Yeah, or you that, can sell. They can. They can. You can get it. It's available. It's going to be extremely expensive. Like yeah. probably like seven hundred dollars. I bet. <laughs> oh, oh, a, a WWE product that isn't like cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, like, I think that the signed titles usually roughly go around for like six fifty or seven hundred bucks. Right. Yeah. Depending on who signed it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I think despite that cringe moment, uh, Rock's going off into the sunset and he said when he comes back, he's coming for Cody. I think they're setting up SummerSlam. He keeps saying that though. The Rock has to go away now. Yeah. The Rock has to go away now. Then get the yeah, fuck I, out I didn't like that. that. It kind of cheapened <laughs> the... It, 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 like you said, clunky is a good word. I expected a few more surprises on this Mania Raw after Mania. Yeah. What was, was it? Was it under you, Triple H there? Did you have a specific one that you were expecting that didn't I happen? thought maybe Tama Tonga or Jacob Fatu would show because they are signed. They would do something. They would be oh. Rock would bring them up maybe as they're like my henchmen guys. They stick around while he's gone, something like that, you know. Kind yeah, of. yeah, maybe. But also Rock's daughter is the GM of uh of, of NXT. They right. they don't talk about that much, but um that's yeah, that's not anyway. a thing. But she was on Raw. She was on Raw um, uh, with the whole uh, – the, the all three GMs were in the room. That's also another issue that I had. I told uh, Pezzes off the air. I'll say it on air. The Rock is ta- definitely taking his liberties. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a lot of what they're doing with him, but he's still taking his liberties. For one, your daughter being the GM of NXT, Why? what purpose like what does it do to serve and, to elevate yeah. the company when she has no um they don't even like mention her as the rock's daughter all that often either no like they'll 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 make reference to it. it's a silent like, push there's no there's like si- she is with the company she does wrestle in nxt so i think they're just trying to give her something to do it and then yeah, yeah well you know like it's like you're saying it's politicking well no there's a lot of politicking okay. on there think yeah. about this his grandmother is in the hall of fame right if you really look back into the history of what his grandmother did for wrestling, she took it over from her husband for four or five years. It was in Hawaii. The promotion didn't do relatively great. In fact, it folded. I mean, they and talk was, about it on Young and Rock. And she was actually they, like, they mention a lot in Young Rock involved in a lot of dirty shit. Yeah, which is something that Wait, they do. The wrestling promoter did did dirty shit. I've well, yeah, like, but I'm just saying it's like, like, like and. I mean, like, if you want to compare them to other promoters of the era, I think part of it has to do with, you know, it being the Rock's relative and also being a female in wrestling, which is a female woman of color. Like it's rare. But yeah, I think that's part Yeah, of like, it. I mean, I'm, I don't want to, you know, throw dirt on the Rock's uh, family member's name, any of them, but I'm just saying, like, you know, it's, it's funny that this stuff is happening and then... Um, Nia Jax is all of a sudden getting a real big push. Yeah. Hey, she wasn't on Mania. If she, if to me, if she had done something on Mania, or if they made, I was afraid that someone they were gonna make the Becky Rhea a three way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, don't do that. Well, that was the thing that I was cool with, but I mean, it would have made sense to put her on Mania. Um, I still think that, you know, I mean, The Rock has definitely pushed because being on the board, but I think that. There are certain things that Triple H does put his uh, foot down on and be like, no, no, for sure, it really yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah. No, and I think Rock has given the re- reins to Triple H for that. Like he's not, he's not he trying to, step on, yeah. he's not stepping on trips. But he is, you know, he's taking a little, a little bit of uh, the stuff that involved himself. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's like it's like working at a company. You're not like necessarily abusing your power at this point, but you are taking advantage of the perks. Yeah. But it also worked. It also worked again. This is why I think that documentary about the behind the scenes of, of the lead up to Mania is so important to watch because I feel like it's going to tell us. It's going to answer a lot of these uh, questions about the politics in the back. But um, but yeah, I, I thought Raw was cool. It, it was a I, wasn't it another like record breaking gate that they, they, they apparently it was like sold out twenty thousand uh, filled up. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're definitely Not better than my ninety two thousand people. <laughs> MSG, MSG in '83. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, what happened with the I Persian thought... clubs, Shiki? Did you ever get those Persian clubs back? 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I've got club. my Persian club back. Yeah. And I've been the fuck out of the jabroni with them. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you're so mad at the rock. He's he No, me. Rock is Rock is my family. <laughs> yeah, he, he I give him family. the name Jabroni. Yeah, but I know. You know, Rock, you are people champion, but I am the real champion. Yeah. I was real. the WF champion, WWF tag champion with that cheap jabroni son of a bitch Nicola. Okay, he don't pay the doorman two dollar. And then <laughs> you are, I tell you, the locker room, you are gonna be great. You just sit down, shut your mouth, don't be jabroni. One day you'll be champion, and you are a champion. But remember, I'll make you the fucking champion. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. Everything Sheik says is gospel, guys. Uh Sheik <laughs> is the final boss and Sheik is the fucking boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh uh, man. That's the only thing I missed from Mania was there was no what versus yeah. I wanted that to kind of happen, but it would have yeah, been too uh, that I was cool, but I, I will say this. I feel like some of those promos went on uh, way too long. And then some of the matches and I understand. I understand the, yeah. the, uh, why they did it. So that's why I'm not trying to, right. you know, like right. say too much negative about it. No. But there were like a lot of NXT debuts sure. on Raw. Sure. Like, but that's normal. Like, that's how like Dragon all the time. Off yeah. and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, wh what's her name? Um, wh what's the NXT champion's name over the female? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Roxanne. Um... Yeah, it's a, oh, it's, a, it's Roxanne Perez. Roxanne it? Perez, yes, 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 that's it. Yeah, like the, I mean, I actually like Ilya Dragunov. I think he might be ready for something on the main roster, but Roxanne Perez still needs work to me. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like, it, like you said, I it was, it was cool. I'm not, I understand why they did it, but they could have benefited from like a debut or a big yeah. sign. You big or return something. It's the first one. Yeah. It's the well, first one. Well, they did another the package. Yeah. They did another package where Seamus, he's coming back. They keep doing that with Seamus, I feel. Like he keeps he keeps coming back, doing a little push, and then they, they ride him off, and then he has to come back. I don't even know if this one was injury related or this time. Oh, but, he got injured. Uh, he so, got yeah. injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh yeah, so that's happening. Seamus is coming back. Um but my favorite moment from Raw was actually after Raw went off the air with the whole Punk and Jay, uh, uh, yeah. and then Punk threw, <laughs> getting them signed, and then and he threw the shoe with his supposedly injured arm. So uh, and, and he even like showed it. He's like, look, it's 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 good. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I I'm hopeful that Punk can be ready. And he even said, next time I'm in Philly, I'll be in my boots. So. Um, I think he's closer to returning to in-ring action than Let's we think. Let's see. You know, that'd be great if it's if it well, happens. John Cena at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, 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 John Cena. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. You know the story behind that, right? Like, he was rehabbing, like, five days a week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. right. And, and they were like, "Let's how do we do this? The shock value of the return. Okay, I won't be as physical. So if you notice, he was very safe, protected in that. Sure. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Um, okay. Let's finish up with uh, predictions. Um, By the way... Before the predictions, one of the thing, the last thing I want to talk about because it's relevant because we're following up on storylines. What did you think of the Drew McIntyre promo on Raw, where he basically goes off and vents about what happened to him on WrestleMania? I don't, I don't feel bad for him at all because no, I mean, but how did you feel about like the delivery? I, 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 uh, I think he's doing some of his best. It went on a little long. I enjoyed it. It was like he was real. He made it seem like he was genuinely frustrated with what yeah. happened. Great, yeah. but he's great. He's I mean, Drew is he's he's come a long way. He's he's great. I I love what he, he wasn't delivering promos like this last year, no. and he had time on the. And mic. That's what I'm saying. Clearly, somebody's been clearly somebody's been like Coaching. working with him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I still give or credit. He's getting less restrictions now. You know, right? That's also true. That's also true. So I feel he still gave props to Seth Rollins, though. He did. He did. Uh, he's oh. like, we had a moment. He's like, and Cody did too for Roman. He, they, bo they both paid their respects to the former champ. But then that bastard Damian Priest came in and cashed in. He's like, but none of that would have happened without that CM Punk. <laughs> but that's where he lost me because 
Punk wasn't going to do anything until he got involved with it. But the thing is, the thing is, you got to understand, you as a viewer on TV are looking at it that way. But if this was happening to you in real life, we you would want to point the finger at that guy. Right. Especially yeah. the sleaze bag, like, heel that you're like, it's never yeah. your fault. It's always, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. That's fair. I'll buy that. Um, so, yeah, let, uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about a few predictions going into um this next year um i i i have a few ideas i think rock's promo from raw is obviously going to be a cody and rock we're going to have a match and i yeah. think that match is going to be at at SummerSlam, and it'll be for the title and i think and i'll go further i think rock beats cody he takes the title and that's going to lead into a roman return and Roman is going to be the ultimate good guy this time. There probably won't be any Heyman involved. Um, and it'll just be the big change in his, in his character and, and, and uh, personality. And he's going to be pissed at The Rock. And it's going to tie back to the fact that before Mania, he, like the couple weeks before, he asked Rock to acknowledge him, right? And Rock did acknowledge him, but it almost wasn't believable. <laughs> and, and 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 the fact that Rock being the final boss and then on Raw never gave flowers to the Roman Reigns. Cody did. Cody gave his flowers to Roman Reigns for being a great champ. Rock just came out and he was just talking about himself and, and wanting to hold that title. So it was almost like, what was all of the bloodline about, right? Well, Rock played into that well. Rock actually acknowledged him and like you said it didn't look like he like did it with all his you know like he actually meant it with all his heart yeah but he said he did it because it was family yeah and he didn't want to go against family but now you're looking to aftermath of media right. i'm just going off your story yeah, no no right yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um, so i say I'm, this i said what i'm saying yeah. like what you're but basically the way that works now is the rock the roman has now lost yep and The Rock never lost Cody, and he never gave up that championship. And he mentioned it. So yeah. you're saying that it'll flip now, and it'll be like, well, you know, The Rock may win the title, and then he's be like, well, you lost the title. I've got the title now. I've even got this new bloodline here. Yeah. You acknowledge me. Right. No, for sure. That's, That's where you're going. I'm with going this. with that, but it's not going to be acknowledged. I it might it might I'm be not it might be a call the back. Tea, but like you know I, you're following that guy i don't I think uh, i do think rock is the heel and roman needs to vanquish rock and yeah rock. i give it a thumbs up yeah there you go <laughs> it, it, it but yeah um, and maybe that's how you work fatu and you know uh, Ooh, okay so yeah tell me your what you think is going to happen I, I mean when i heard tama tonga who's king haku's son uh and king haku was a big part of rock's childhood um, he was at Mania too. He was at the uh, the Hall yeah, of Fame. Was at the, yes, at the Hall yes, of Fame. Yes, yes. You, have, you have these two young Simones. You could start a new Simone faction with that, and then, um, and yeah, maybe in some capacity, Roman and Cody have to team up. You know, against yeah, Roman. yeah, yeah. Roman and Cody teaming up. I could totally see that. I think. Keep in mind, Rock uh, debuted on the Survivor Series, so I do think something screwy or fishy would happen at survivor series i could see cody holding it till survivor series and that's when you do rock cody or you do something screwy uh to cody to where he loses but i don't see cody losing clean there's gonna be some sort of schmoz finish you know money in the bank is in july money in the bank is before some saying does right. some money in the bank factor play into it you know maybe maybe that's true that's true that is that is a factor i uh but i think bl I think the the chapter of bloodline is now over. I think yes, Cody needs a fresh that. challenge. Cody needs a fresh challenge, and I think and he's gonna get that. He's probably gonna. I think he's gonna defend this uh, universal title against a uh, array of of um, uh, superstars. La Knight LA being Knight. one. Keep the two La Knight for sure being one. No, I think I don't know. Keep him away. Do you want to do face face for early? That that you say? No, that? I, I, it doesn't I think, have to be the first one. I think LA Knight's going to get a mid card title before he ever gets back in the I, world. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think LA Knight's going to be the first opponent. I think what's going to happen is uh, there are more natural opponents that make more sense right make now. Make more sense. Yeah, 
I mean, Seth is supposedly only out for a month. That's what I read. So he's. I only... heard Roman will come back at, at SummerSlam. Yeah, so he's Roman isn't being advertised until the week of SummerSlam. So there's going to be potentially a situation there unless something you changes. Do Seth Roman Cody triple threat. Triple threat. I'm getting kind of like I kind of want triple threats to have more meaning. I feel like triple threats have become just kind of like, all right, put them in a triple threat. They become the John Laurinaitis uh, match. Right, right. It's a <laughs> tonight on Raw, we're gonna have a triple threat match <laughs> yeah. for the WWE World Championship. Laurinaitis, you got I'm bigger shit, words. Shit in my mouth, like because he's. <laughs> People power. Yeah. Like literally that I I, I tell Pedro all the time, that was his solution for every single problem that ever happened on Raw. If there was problem, he he yeah. 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 Well, he was busy, you know, getting busy. He was so, having his yeah. own triple threat match. <laughs> yeah. Right. Double double two. Handy. No, those were handy. Those were three stages of hell handicap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, if he, cat. <laughs> and if he didn't do it, he would have been fired. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I think, I think a Seth Cody match would be, would make sense. Seth doesn't have a title now. So it would, it would, I think that would be a natural switch over to, to Seth and Cody. Um, LA night we talked about, I, I think other big names that, that are, that deserve a push. I think Shinsuke. And Cody have stories that's that still can go unresolved. Unresolved. There's there's that. I love Shinsuke. Heel Shinsuke is one of my favorite. I do heels. not know if they're gonna push Shinsuke, especially after last night. That guy took a a clean loss to Dragon off, and then I mean that was putting him over, right? That was putting. I mean, like he, he's Shinsuke's taken a couple losses lately. That I know. Haven't been putting him in the main event picture. I just don't. And he was just in the main event picture, so. I don't Lashley is a face right now, but I think Lashley would be a good stopgap for pulling him too. Lashley would be good. You need, get, you need to get the SummerSlam. So what do you do? You need to get the SummerSlam. I, what would work is Randy Orton. Randy Orton is good. Yeah. Randy. Randy needs to turn for that's why I truly believe you have Randy turn whenever Cody loses the title, it's partially due to a Randy Orton turn. And then you, then you lead and to me. That's the other thing you could do because you have to think about what does Cody do now? If it's Rock Roman next year, SummerSlam, what's the other or at, at Mania? What's the other big Cody match you could do at Mania? The next logical one, it's either Punk or Orton. And there's his now is Punk Orton. heel? Is Punk heel versus Cody? You think, or is Punk staying? Yeah, Punk. Because I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be hard to turn Punk heel right now. Not yet. It takes uh, time. Punk needs to go into his first Mania main event as a face. You right. do steps. Hundred percent, I agree with that. But to me, I think Orton yeah. is a good Mania match because who did Orton face in a triple threat at Mania 27? Cody and Legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you right. Cody Orton, you say that's for Mania. Cody finally vanquishes the evil Orton. Right, 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 right. I could see that too. Um, he asked him that when he came back, remember? We're yeah. going to have a problem. Right, right. And he's like, you stay out of my way. Yeah. No, that's true. Uh, so that's the Cody side of things. Um, what about on the other side? Uh, Damian Priest is a champ. They already uh, announced the contender or through the match of Raw, right? It's Uso. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But but how long are we? is, is Damian going to stay champion? I think yeah. Drew gets a shot either. I think that that's where the biggest clash of the champions is in Scotland, where he's from. So he'll and win. And that's in June, so I think Drew wins it by June, or Drew gets a shot at least. Yeah, and, and then there's the Punk factor too, right? With Drew, so there's got to be another thing. Do you do Punk Drew? I like the idea of Punk facing Drew in in Scotland, and you do. A what I love punk. about this Drew Punk rivalry is that when Punk came back, I wanted to see Seth Punk go at it and and just destroy each other because I thought that storyline was happening when Punk was still in AEW, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Like the Seth and Punk and rivalry see. was real. That was a real thing. The whole Drew side of it kind of, I mean, credit to Drew. He's won me over with his great promos. Um, and, and the fact that he prayed for him to get it. Like all of that stuff was like, it's hard for me to get worked at this age, but it's it kind of got me like, it, I'm like, no, nah, fuck you, dude. Like Punk needs to, kick, you know, get you, get you back for that. But, but uh, we're in the lines. They're making it real. They're making you believe. 
Again. I loved it. I love it. That's what we want. That's what we want. So definitely Punk, I think, is closer to returning. Um, so I feel there's going to be that. Punk and, and, and Drew have to finish that. Um, where that goes, I don't know. I feel maybe by... It's it, it, what's what's the pay per view after Backlash? I think, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be Clash of the Cash in June. Okay, so then then that's probably where uh, maybe Punk joins in on that match. Maybe it's Damian Punk and again I just said I hate triple threats, but maybe it's Damian. Maybe it could be. It could be. What are your thoughts? What are what are some predictions? Not spoilers, just predictions. <laughs> I'll make a prediction for uh, the U.S. title. Okay. I think um, somewhere down the line, I can't predict where they're going to book it yet. I think it's too soon, but I think maybe towards, I don't know, the next one would be uh, SummerSlam, right? The next major, or one of the big Well, four. Money in the Bank is coming up before that, but yeah. Yeah, Money in the Bank, I'm more concerned. With, I'm making a U.S. title prediction. I'm not really making a world title prediction. You gotta. There is only one moron that didn't pick the to go after a world title so and we'll not talk about that well, think uh, about where SummerSlam is it's in cleveland home to the current u.s title holder logan ah, yeah that's true yeah but i still uh, yeah i think that though we'll see a match booked at that point um between um logan paul and la knight because we've not gotten that yet that's a good SummerSlam match to be yeah, um the um and their style the social so media star versus really the mega star yeah. yeah, it does need a belt though. That's the only thing. L.A. Yeah, he does. No, I'm saying you that Logan L.A. is a mania without belt. That's a oh right. That's a money match without. So I don't know. Does Logan lose the belt before? Do you really want him to lose before a big SummerSlam? I don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it happens until SummerSlam. Do you think his his feud with uh, K.O. and Orton is done? Uh, I don't think it's going to last that much longer. Because where could they go with it, really? Yeah. I, I mean, mean he, the fact that they had to... Like, I mean, he's a part-timer, ultimately, so that's... Yeah, well, the fact that they had to use two established stars in a triple threat match with him, it's like... like It, it, uh, it, it just... I, I feel like it had to have been... No, I think even either one of those guys could have carried it to a good WrestleMania match. It's just like, yeah. I, looking forward... Or where you could take the story, I don't see anything that could happen with Logan Paul with that. I do think that if they wanted to push the story further, it could lead into a heel turn by Randy Orton on Kevin Owens since they've been buddy buddy for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I actually okay. Wait, I want to hear from you, Pratik. What are what are some uh, predictions you have outside with with this angle? Or, or in general, with any of these U.S. intercontinental title, U.S. title, where do you think these are going to be heading? Into yeah, the I think uh, I could see Owens get one, one more, one more single shot against Logan, but I do see Owens ultimately coming out loss. Uh, or yeah. Orton gets the big single match because who who took the pinfall in the main match? Uh, right. Owens. Uh, right. But Owens still hates Logan with a passion, so probably what's going to happen is they're going to put Owens on a different. Um, uh, brand to keep them. Separate. Well, the draft is coming up. That's the other thing they were talking I think, about. I think you give you give you do Randy Orton and uh, uh, Logan. You give that a singles match. You either do it in these remaining months before the, or you do it at the pay per view, the next yeah. one, France, because yeah. you need it's a, a European premium live event. You do need some big money matches, and you don't want to start brand new feuds right right away. No, right. Thing. so I'm I, gonna go out on a limb and predict them. Maybe predict another one. I'm just off. I'm really going out there this one because everything would have to line up right. But I think WrestleMania next year, you're going to see uh, Mommy versus Jade Cargo. Mm. Or Bianca. That's still the money match that people have. Yeah. I, I think what Bianca comes before that. but Well, I think Bianca and Jade Cargo will feud before, yeah. before that. And I think the winner of that is going to be the one that goes to Mania. Uh, but you think Jade is ready to be pushed? Either on? that or look, either that, like I said, Bianca beats her before WrestleMania and you get a Jade Cargo, Bianca Belair WrestleMania match. But I do think that, that Jade Cargo will be in the main event of WrestleMania next year. Okay. Assuming that 
she continues to do well with crowd reactions and and, and um, the fundamentals. I mean, I mean, we don't know. We haven't seen her in a singles yet, so we have just to yeah. The, the the problem that they've said that they've had with her, she's having problems memorizing mm-hmm. match sequences. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Wow. Um, Any other predicts? I do think Damian. I would like to see Damian hold on to it for a while, but there's just so much money in Drew being the title holder and Punk and Drew for that heavyweight championship. So that's gotta be, yeah, that's, and I then, don't want Damien to be a placeholder champion because he, he is, he has a good look. He has a, he got a great reaction. I yeah. think the judgment day needs some reign of terror right now. Like they can say, Hey, I also think they're going to get those raw tie. I had a thought that they would, the Miz and truth would lose the titles. Yeah. On the raw, and right. they go back. Because I do think there's something to Judgment Day being this like, hey, we have all the titles. Right, uh, right. And, and the only re- I, I agree with you, but the only reason they didn't do that, I think, is it was just the night after, or the, like it was like the Monday after. No, so that's coming. That's coming though. And well, that's coming. Be, it'll be Finn and Dominic. Right, because right. You don't want to give Damian two titles like that. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And JD doesn't want to carry anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you don't want JD to carry. Anything. I don't. I don't like JD. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think Bronson Reed's gonna get a push also because he's been having a good showing lately. He also won the the um, won the, the Andre Andre Giant. Giant. Oh, the Andre Giant. Triple H guy. Yes. Triple H specifically grabbed him from New Japan and hello. Right, yeah. right. Um, okay. Uh, final thoughts? Like it's the Jerry Springer show. Um, what what do you? Any final thoughts as far as like what you want to see or what what you like in, in general? You can you can you can go out of WWE if you want, with with the young fucks if you want to talk about that. Not uh, on the show. Not on this show. Cool. That's how I like it. Shiki, you you you. I mean, I will give thoughts, but just not on that one. No, show. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like the direction that the company's going in. Hopefully, it's sustainable. Yeah. Um, and I think it is. Um. And uh, yeah, like I, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing more of what WWE does uh, under uh, Paul Levesque's creative yeah. uh, vision. <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah, like I mean, we have to get used to it because I mean, everyone's still uh, people are still calling him Triple H, but they make it an emphasis now to make sure it's Paul Paul Levesque. Right, Paul, right. You know, like like it's like they want us to forget he was Triple H, which is going to be really hard to do, but. Yeah, you know, how can you an executive? And, yeah, but yeah, that and I hope CM Punk gets his WrestleMania moment. I hundred percent agree with that. Uh, he but needs yeah, his what WrestleMania you... moment, whether it's with Drew, whether it's with Seth, I do think at some point though he needs to retire. So, and part of me was like, if they don't do Chicago Mania at forty one, well they can't do it at forty one because there's no stadium yet. But maybe forty two. So you have Punk headline Mania forty one, and then forty two he retires, and maybe that's how he retires. He puts over Seth Lamb. That's how he. Oh, that is wow! That's two-year plan for that. That's putting over Seth. That's gonna be uh That'll be. A... He's gonna. He's gonna put over Seth. I do think that's, that's gonna, gonna be, be a big of him because that's gonna show. I think if he does that, I think that was part of why people he... that of uh, what his character is really like. Yeah, and it's gonna like basically like dispel all the bullshit yeah. that's been out there about yeah, yeah, this yeah. man. No, that's true. There's that's also true. something to. This is bizarre storytelling, but like Punk wins the title, but somehow Drew gets money in the bank, and you see Drew spoil Punk's title run. Ah, so they resume that feud later. Uh, uh, Yeah, that that could be. I prayed for this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, I'm I'm loving it. Punk doesn't need it. It'd be good for him to get that moment like Drew did, but Punk doesn't need to carry around a title. He's done that already. He is he's Lesnar. He is the Lesnar of this roster right now he's the attraction yes yes even though he's injured right now he does need to come in and wrestle every you know did you notice this wrestlemania moment a final thought that they actually several times especially paul Heyman in his acceptance speech mentioned barack yeah lesnar and they did not shy away from his name this whole weekend so i don't know is it is there a chance that we uh Get Lesnar back on WWE TV in some form of capacity. Maybe if Mania is in Minneapolis, then maybe. Uh, I don't think. I, I think. 
I don't think uh, Lesnar is interested in coming back because he was he was a Vince guy, so it's it's like. But the thing is, if uh, that, that's not what I'm alluding to, I mean, like, yes, I, I get it. He may never come back for another match, but if he was involved with the stuff that he was going to get a race from WWE TV, and yeah. they were already working on, you know, what they did on the video game, by the way, he's he not, yeah. he he's in there as. Uh, uh, someone you can play against in storyline because he's a part of it was too he's late not to a game, game, but he's not a playable character no. you can really? only i'm sure if they were to um later on find out that he was uh you know that i mean he would get acquitted of whatever he is uh accused of then there's something in the game the game developers could probably make him a dlc again yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. His character and his motions he's in the game they didn't take him out because it was too late. Like the whole thing's based on forty years of WrestleMania, so you can play against him in those moments. No showcase moments. You take them as a playable right, character. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's uh, intriguing stuff. I think, I think he's done with WWE. At least, even I think, even if he's acquitted, he was. Uh, if you guys recall, when when Vince was let go or he resigned the first time, Brock Lesnar left immediately. Exactly, he left immediately. <laughs> He left and, in the middle of a show. Right, he left in the middle of a show. Like, he's not, like, Brock has never, like, shied away from, like, doing what he wants to do, I'm ultimately. Yeah. yeah, he's not going to sacrifice, right? He's not going to be like, I'll give this a chance. Well, I'm not saying. the money, that's the first thing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's um, yeah, and he's good. Like, he doesn't need money. So. Um, right, but I was just talking from, like, in Merchant, because they still make money off the guy's likeness and. Yeah. So but I'm cool, saying, so. like, for Brock, he's thinking about – for him, he's got to be – it's got to be intriguing to him. But that's what I'm saying. He's all about the money. We're not talking about him wrestling at this point. We're talking about the use of his likeness and image in his name. And if you do that, if if he's acquitted, he's not going to say no because he doesn't have to show up to any of these events to wrestle. Yeah. But he can generate profits from his mer- merch right. and everything else continuing to sell. I don't think he says no to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Well, then you can make that same argument for Austin. If, if it makes sense, then he would come back too. But uh, well, Austin's merch already sells there. That's my point. He's not. No one says you can't sell a three sixteen shirt I mean, at a yeah. WrestleMania. Right, right, that's right, right, right. that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, you know, like yeah. we're not forget the in ring involvement. We might see that I, you might very well see him retire from the ring. He may never step into a ring right. again. But like, like. Does that mean you're not going to sell any more suplex sh- city shirts? Yeah. Or any like stream any suplex block city. Of matches? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> suplex shitty. Yeah. Suplex peeping because I guess the video the allegation is you want a peeing tape. Right. <laughs> yeah. Suplex. Oh my god, that's funny. I just have one more question, and then I'm I'm ready to wrap this up. But yeah. uh, was Shane McMahon anywhere around at Mania? He wasn't. He his wasn't. son, his son is football player for IU in Indiana. Football yeah, team. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just curious because they were go- They were. It was about to be the first mania without any McMahon involvement until Stephanie showed up. But <laughs> uh, right, that was that was the whole you thing. See, the McMahons will always be synonymous with mania. So I think Stephanie. It's good that she's back because she can be the face for a while. No, I agree. I'm. I'm just saying that, like that's proof. Stephanie vouching for the Paul Levesque era was her basically saying, you know, fuck what Vince did. And and she was like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, but what I'm saying is, uh, I don't, I think Shane is also on the same boat as Stephanie. Like he, he's, I think he left the company initially back in like 2007. I think some of it is he was disgusted by Vince's stuff. Yeah. He was, he was not, but it's harder to make that. I mean, you're right. You're both right. Uh, I'm saying it's harder to make that case for a male in the public eye, you know, they're like, yeah. yeah, he probably let his old man do whatever, even though he didn't approve it. But like, when you look at Stephanie, you almost look at it like she could have been a victim. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that promo that mm-hmm. naturally is like exactly what's happening that she cut like 20 years ago on her dad in the, in the, in the, in the locker room. She's like, I'm tired of you and all that. I mean, it, it started trending once the allegations came out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a Shane fan, so I, I'm I'm hoping that his last moment on WWE was was not him tearing his quad and just fucking leaving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was, 
that's my only thing. I just want him to have a proper. If even if he's not going to continue, I'm, I want him to have a proper. I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. That's for sure. Um, I think Shane should be in the Hall of Fame, and eventually Stephanie. But uh, um, yeah, man. Any any other thoughts before we wrap this thing up? I mean, I just say you know Heyman said this in his speech about like just enjoy the product right now, enjoy the industry. The wrestling economy is so good right now. There there are. I don't look at it as tribalism. I don't think about it as AW versus this company, WWE versus this company. There are people I like that are in all the companies. So I look at it that way. Like Mustafa Ali is in TNA right now. Big Mustafa Ali fan. You know, like Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love Nick Nemeth in TNA. So I look at it as like who I'm, who I'm a fan of and wherever company they're in is whatever company they're in. I got to see Speedball Mike Bailey a bunch of times. I'm kind of into him. There's rumors he might oh, okay. be in WWE. You know, like so enjoy the product for what it is. Cut all this tribalism shit out. You know, like yeah. Enjoy different people. You can have people you don't like. I agree. And Webb, I don't. I don't like the, the the people you mentioned. I like other people in that company though. I'm a big Samoa Joe fan. I think Samoa Joe should have that title for much longer. Absolutely. I don't talk down on AEW, dude. I, I watch the product. Yeah. I watch yeah. who I like. You know. Yeah. Exactly. You watch what you like. <laughs> but they do need a revamp in that in in the front office. Like well, whoever, whatever is happening with the. They need a new Booker. Then, uh, yeah. You know, and I'll say this, and I'll say I don't a think Booker, they, who's actually not a friend, but actually a Booker. Right. Yeah, and I'll say this, and I'll say this. Uh, you know, Tony Khan. I don't think anybody will dispute this that knows him personally, but I, 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 but I believe what they say. Tony Khan is a nice guy, really passionate about the business, but he's just not good at booking. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all. No. And and I yeah I agree, and I think Tony Khan to really get back like get AEW back on track he's got to get the evps to 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 get out of that that position <laughs> no, i'm serious because and i'm not being a mark for punk or whatever by saying that i'm saying that because it's it's in the pudding it's it's the only like people were legitimately concerned that they, they were gonna try to beat sting and darby allen at his retirement match right like that was actually a concern so that's that tells me all it all i need to know about the culture that's that they've created over there. Well, look, they blamed it on punk. Punk left. It's still toxic. There's yeah. still there's still some problems there that need to be worked. I think Jericho needs to figure out what's going on there. There seems to be some problems with him too. You know? Yeah. Well, the guy signed a, like a ten year contract. Remember, and he's his skills are diminishing every day. I mean, I I, I respect the man for everything yeah. he's done. But he's just not over anymore, and he's not. He can't do what he does. He, he can't reinvent himself anymore. It's it's yeah. done. Yeah. The reinvention is stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a suggestion for Tony Khan. Maybe you could do what TNA fucked up with, and you can hire Scott the more. Mm. And be a good Booker. Yeah. And, Scott and did maybe... a lot of cool things. Uh, there are rumors why he left. It's unfortunate um, situation because he really did a lot for that company, raising yeah. the pay scale for. TNA stars and those paper, those those rebellion, those last few papers were great. It's it's unfortunate though. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, where are you going to be, man? Tell, uh, plug some of your shows. Where you where you where you're. I'm in Chicago and then Indianapolis. I go back on the road uh, uh, Thursday and Friday, so it's back on the road for a bit, but kind of out of the Midwest mostly. Plan is to be back in LA mid May, early June for like three weeks, three, four weeks, and figure things out from there. Oh, we're definitely getting together then, for sure. Definitely. Uh, at Pratik Comedy on Instagram, PratikComedy.com. I got my special out, Nick and Sheila's Kid. Uh, I do a podcast with my parents where we review movies called Cinerama with Mom and Papa. That's on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's on my link tree, and yeah, all this cool stuff. Yeah. Love it. I love it. I, I got a glimpse of that uh, podcast with your parents. That's super awesome that you're doing that. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. Uh, um, Web? plug away well i'm gonna plug away for both of us okay do it oh yeah other than the fact that you know where to find him which is pej the maniac on all social media platforms follow me on instagram where i post all my shows that are coming up uh i just did the dime bar tonight before this uh epi- episode recording um and i think i know what you're about to say and yes you'll find me in weapon xmc and all social media platforms and um, other than that, me and Pej will be in New York City in the next week. Oh, great. So, um, oh, yeah. If you're out in New York City and you happen to see us, 
make sure you uh, come and say hello. Come say hello. Uh, I'm per I'm performing at a few clubs out there. Um, my first time uh, in New York uh, doing comedy, so I'm excited about that. Um, we're going to shoot some content as well over there. Uh, I'll and, do a music video for me as yeah. well as um, looking to finalize. Once I do, I'll put it on social media, but I'm looking to finalize my show out in Brooklyn, New York as well. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. So. Yeah. So good things are happening. Um, grateful for all of it. Uh, you audience members uh, supporting us. We appreciate you. Spread the word. Legend of Wrestling podcast. We're just getting started with every story that ends. A better one begins. So we are uh, we are Legend of Wrestling podcast. Pratik, he's always going to be part of this show. Um, he's always welcome here. Always, whenever you want to get on, just let us know. Um, yeah, Thanks. absolutely, man. Weapon X, MC, Pej the Maniac, Pratik, Comedy. Um, we will catch you on the next one. Because this shock, Teddy Bears, this shock, Dusty Rose, this shock, Early Savage, this shock, Bill Bossy.